Big day, Friday. You made it. Almost. It might be spring break. Spring break might be starting. Spring break might be ending for some people. Regardless it is, it's Friday. It's Preston. It's Bill. It's Jen. It's the early game. We are here. A lot to talk about this morning. And um, I just got to start it off, Bill. How happy were you? <laughs> How happy are you, sir? Are you happy with yourself? Yeah. Good job. Told you. <laughs> Tried to tell you. Tried to warn you. Tried to tell you. My need to be right is greater than my need to pull for a particular team. Oh, that's uh, that's well known. My want to be right, my want to receive accolades and receive my roses is greater than my need to be affiliated with one particular team. Good job. You did it. And not only that, but I felt like I called it perfectly. I felt like I felt like it was Clemson won because their coach had a better game plan. Their coach was more prepared. Their team was more prepared. I felt like Chase Hunter obviously was a big part of that game, helping shut down Caleb Love, who couldn't have thrown it in the ocean last night. Yeah. Most of Arizona couldn't have thrown it. I felt like the fact that I called it. And then did you see the graph? Um, I think I might have tweeted. I might have tweeted the graphic out. Did you see the graphic? Uh, on Arizona's choke jobs, absolutely <laughs> choke jobs. Is this what they do? I I was used to this in the early, in the early two thousands after they won the championship. They were actually were doing that prior to ninety seven, when they absolutely choked it away. Or in ninety seven when they won it, but Arizona. Let me see if I've got this here because I believe I believe. This was the statistic last night uh, that that popped up. Yes. All right. This is from CBS Sports, and they have taken it down. You got to be kidding me. Got to screenshot that thing. I should have. Got They've to. taken it down on Can't all of Arizona's agree. choke jobs against lower seeds. Somebody from Arizona PR program got to them today. Princeton. Princeton beat them last year. They were a two seed, and Princeton was a 15 seed. They lost to Houston. Houston was a five seed two years ago when Arizona was a one seed. This is what Arizona does. They get into the NCAA tournament. They find a game, and this set up perfectly for them because Brad Burnell would outcoach them, and then and then Caleb Love would go just over from three point range. And now that sets up a rematch of Clemson and Alabama. Alabama gets the job done late last night in a great one over North Carolina. I saw that. I saw that. Well, I did. Let me let me be careful with my words here. I saw the highlights from that. I did not see that because the starting time for that game was 1030. What time did the game start, sir? Uh, I think it was a, I think it was around. I don't know. 10 o'clock. -ish. I say that because there was a. A, a confluence, a coming mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. of sports that was happening all mm -hmm. right a lot of, a lot there. Of sport, a lot of at, at the, you had you had the combination of uh, I couldn't help myself. I I think I've told you I bought the NBA league pass, and I couldn't help myself last night as the Clemson Arizona game is ending on the second TV. I had South Carolina baseball, which was tangled up in a a very tight game with Alabama. And as I'm kind of just scrolling through Twitter at the end of Clemson, Arizona, I realize, and, and Austin, my son, was sitting with me, and he gets into the NBA a little bit more, which has dragged me into the NBA, that the Celtics and the Hawks were playing in Atlanta, and it was a really good game. So it's kind of one of those things you have it. You're like, oh, man, it's a one-point game. There's about oh, 50 wait, seconds oh, wait, to go. Wait, 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 wait. I, I know this is very early for NBA talk. So you actually witnessed what happened last night in Atlanta? You you were watching that? You yes, didn't... You with your eyes? I flipped. Uh, we flipped over. So we flipped over. Okay. And watched that until the end, and and then cut back over. We cut back over to Alabama and North Carolina. I think North Carolina was up seventeen to eight, I believe. And for those who don't know, there's there's really no reason why you should know. And I'm probably going to get this wrong, but I believe Dejounte Murray scored forty plus points, which is cool. However, he took. 40-plus shots. Is that accurate? That is accurate. <laughs> that is accurate. 
That was the stat that threw me because I was I, – again, I saw it on Twitter – that this was coming down the little NBA app that I follow. It's like, oh, good, you know, good game, good. good and I, it was kind of again, we were kind of in that lull. The CBS crew was going on. Connecticut was in the middle of finishing off San Diego State. It was a thirty-point game. Didn't want to flip over that. It had the had flipped over a little bit for the Cubs and Rangers. But you know, here here comes a game down to the wire. Maybe you're going to get a great shot, which you did. All the reasons that you flip over, if like if you've got NFL Red Zone or if you've got one of those things where you're like, oh. We're in the final minute. Mm-hmm. Got to flip over and let's see if something crazy happens. Flip over and the first thing that pops up is Murray had, I think, 40 points on 41 shots. I was like, oh, my goodness. He finished, DeJounte Murray last night finished with in an NBA of 44 points on 44 shots. And that caused me to look up. And I did not realize how many games Wilt Chamberlain had where he shot the ball 40-plus times in his career. Preston, there's only two players, and it's pretty pretty easy names to figure out. I mean, that's obviously Kobe. there's only two. Kobe's obviously one of them. Obviously, and the other one is basically his peer, or, or should, I should say, the very first Kobe, Jordan. Yes, only two players in what I would say modern basketball history, past Wilt, past Elgin Baylor, <laughs> past another name that I had never heard of, who taken forty shots in a game. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that was, so, Jante was just doing his best Kobe tribute last night. Like, just, listen, I'm going to, Mambo mentality tonight. And, and I loved it because they're like, he's got all 11 points in overtime. I was like, well, he's got all the shots. I don't know what's going on in that. So, I, the what time Alabama and, uh, and North Carolina actually started, I don't know because, like I said, it was just kind of a, a nice, everything ha- was happening at the same time. The South Carolina game, uh, the, 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 the ending of the Arizona Clemson, that, Hawks Celtics game announcers making a mistake I'm very familiar with that because they win the Hawks win the Hawks hit a shot Marie hits a shot of course he does with one tenth of a second left to win by a point and the announcers get so excited they're like the only team to beat Boston twice this year to which six seconds later a graphic goes up to show that it's the third team to beat the Celtics twice this year, but eh, tomato, tomato. Uh, flip back over, then got into Alabama and and North Carolina in a very good game last night, and did not bother with Illinois and Iowa State, which again was a great game, it was a good game, but it if you just whatever you think of cardboard was Illinois Iowa State. We knew that was going to happen, and Bill had a revelation. This is my least favorite weekend of the tournament. If you rank the weekends of the tournament, this weekend right here. Eh. I give me opening week, opening weekend, that Thursday, that, that first opening weekend, and then give me your final four weekend. This one, eh. you ready for a scorcher? Yes, scorcher hot Let's take. Do it. Six six oh nine. Let's go. You ready? You ready for it? Mm-hmm. Next weekend's the worst weekend of the NCAA basketball Ooh. tournament. Unless your team is in it, it's it just hmm. No, that's next week. interesting. And and I and I'll tell you why cuz you get the two games on Saturday, but kind of it's anticlimactic. You're in there for the, the for the well, you're in there Bill, for the big we stuff. We have a different we have a difference of opinion. We obviously got to go out to the crowd. 803-404-6100 early. Start now, if your bench, team's in it. Start bench cut. Start bench cut. Opening weekend. Start. Sweet 16. Bench. Final 4. Get out of here. Whoa. Whoa. Get out of here. And and I'll even give you an extra in, in that because if you're including, if you're including the Final Four weekend, that means you're including a Monday night game that's going to tip off that's true. around 9.15 no, to 9.20. No, that's true. That's true. And I'll, I'll take it a step further. You did this. You did the. We did this little game about a week ago, or maybe earlier this week. I can't remember. Name me the Final Four from last year. Ooh, yeah, that's rough. Well, was okay. UConn, San Diego State, Florida Atlantic. It's the fourth one. I think Miami. Yeah, yeah, we did that. I only early. know this because we just did this. Yeah. Maybe you're onto something. I'm telling you, next weekend, next weekend, the Final Four. Like it, it is honestly of all of all the major sports. I think Final Four for as great as the tournament is, as great as these two weekends are. Final four weekend and championship game is like, eh, okay. Anticlimactic. Cool. All right. Really interesting. 
Have you ever heard of anybody, If again, unless your team's in it? And I'm starting to think Clemson's going to be in this thing. They've already beat Alabama once this year. Oh, boy. We'll get to that. We'll get to that Can't later. Can we have anything? Can't they let us just have something? Please. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's rough around here. Let us have the Final Four, please. I'm, I'm just, but unless your team's in it, have you ever been to a Final Four viewing party? I have. For, with Without your team in it? No, that's true. <laughs> no. Oh, man. We're going to take that from us too, huh? 803-404-6100 is, is how you can weigh in this morning. It was, it was a good night, and that, that's the part, is you still get good games. Clemson, Arizona was a good game last night, uh, depending on how you want to view it. North Carolina, Alabama was a great game. Again, Illinois and Iowa State, pretty good game last night. Uh, Connecticut stumping everybody. Yeah, I, no. I, I will say this. If Clemson gets there, if Clemson gets to the – if Clemson gets to the Final Four, your if your prize is Connecticut, that's 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 great. Enjoy, enjoy your week. Because I don't want to, I wouldn't want to see Connecticut anywhere right now. Uh, and I'll be excited about tonight's games. We'll talk about tonight's games as well. Uh, a lot to do. A lot to do this morning. 803-404-6100 is how you can uh, weigh in. Start bench cut. See, we'll see. Lavar on the live stream. He agrees. He agrees, he agrees Bill is right, unless your team is in it. Interesting. Final four weekend championship. If you, if you encompass all of it, overrated. And I don't even know if it should be rated. Wow. I didn't expect that. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a crazy way to wrap up that tournament. But, uh, yeah, 803-404-6100, how you can weigh in. We'll get to several topics here early on this morning, several different things to discuss. Preston Thorne, got to get out of here. Looks all dapper this morning. He's got to get out of here uh, about 715. Chris Deering is going to join us. A lot of high school sports to get to with him. A lot of spring break tournaments going on. Oh, we yeah. will get to all of that. The Braves officially open today. And I can't help this. I'm so sorry. Before we hit the break, I have to do this. Jen, I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. That's the only way I can describe it last night. Starting off the cub season with a bang. Or a pop or a tear or whatever it may have been. Did you see this? Did you catch this, Preston? Cubs. Cub. I, I, I just got very curious. Justin Steele, Cubs starter, yeah. opening day starter, yeah. fielding a grounder very early in the contest, very early in the contest. I think four, I think it was around the fifth inning. Oh, yeah, that's a hamstring. Oh, yeah. You seen it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the uh, – And there went there went the Cubs season. <laughs> that's a hamstring. That's a very familiar look I see there. <laughs> oh! Yeah. Four to three, the Rangers take down the Cubs on opening night. Hopefully, hopefully nothing too significant. I have not seen the – I have not seen if they updated after the game uh, as to what his injury was, but yep, right out of the bat. Braves will get going today. Look forward to that. We'll talk a little bit about that as well as we roll through. A lot to get to. Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner, she's Jen Jensen. It's the early game. There is almost too much going on this week. That's right. I mean, it's Easter weekend. There's a basketball tournament taking place 
Major League Baseball opening day is taking place. The Gamecocks and the Tigers are playing baseball in important series. You have so much that you need to do, and it always involves also enjoying a great meal. And it, that is exactly what you will find at Old Tommy Meat Market, where you'll find the best meat buying experience out there. Trust me, whether you visit the South Congaree store, St. Andrews Road in Irmo, or the Lexington store, you're going to find incredible cuts of beef, pork, poultry, seafood. Maybe you want a nice bacon-wrapped filet tonight to check out a little bit more basketball. Maybe you want to go with the Italian chicken skewers, absolutely delicious. Maybe you want a nice thick-cut pork shop to put on the grill tonight, or maybe you want some delicious salmon. Whatever it is, Old Tommy Meat Market has you take care of. Again, three locations, St. Andrews Road in Irmo, South Congaree Store, or the Lexington Store. Stop by Old Tommy Meat Market. Tell them Bill Gunner sent you. No accidents to report. Great start to that Friday morning. 74 will be our high today with some sunny skies. 79 tomorrow, 83 on Sunday. And uh, we'll stay in the 80s until about Tuesday before we maybe see some rain on Wednesday and drop down to about 69. So we'll soak in a beautiful weekend weather-wise. Right now, though, it is we do have a chilly start, so you want to at least have a jacket to get your day started off. It's 40 on the early game.
Ah, uh, a week from today. A week from today, we will be out at Charwood Golf Club for the annual spring golf tournament that is next Friday, April the 5th at Charwood. $400 is the sign up for a foursome. You need to call today. I was talking with Rock Lucas yesterday. We are right around almost over 20 teams now so we've got a great turnout coming and several more expected so spots are filling up you need to call and get your team booked four hundred dollars per foursome 10 a.m shotgun start next weekend preston and i'll be out there broadcasting early on we'll have a great lineup for you we get some onion sausage by old timey meat market that is being served for breakfast we'll have a mimosa bar sponsored by Saki's wine and spirits that will help you get through the morning we'll have fantastic lunch from firehouse subs and we're gonna have some incredible giveaways as well south Carolina baseball tickets carowinds tickets concert tickets a craft beer passport come on out you want to hang out with us next Friday. Speaking of which, this Friday today, South Carolina women played later on today. I have to tell you about that uh, because next Friday, Preston, I hope we're talking about the women's Final Four. Or we, and the reason we'll be talking about it is if South Carolina is in it. So a great, another great reason to come on out next Friday. Get registered today. 803-755-2000 is how you can register today. $400 for a foursome. 10 a.m. shotgun start next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. We hope to see you out there at Charwood for the spring 107.5 The Game golf tournament. Last night, again, in basketball, Connecticut just bludgeons San Diego State. 82-52, what never really a game. Preston didn't even buy, never watched a second of it. Uh, when I saw the score flash across, it was maybe a four-point game. This is very early yes. in the game. and Might have been four to nothing, it sounds like. Maybe. It was very, very early in the game, but I had no, I didn't really have much interest in watching that game. But for some reason... I don't know. It, we, I had it on the rundown for today, but let's maybe punt that. But UConn, I don't know. They're we very did this, good. You and I did this last we year after this, they won we, the championship. Very same conversation. It's, we're going to have to bring the conversation back. But all I'm saying is just did not interest me yesterday. They're good. They're a great team, uh, an incredible program absolutely incredible program uh yeah we'll, we'll kind of look back at that uh, uh maybe next week a little bit see if they do indeed get past uh get past uh uh illinois this uh on saturday tomorrow uh but connecticut rolling along right now the other early game clemson goes out and just just kind of plays their brand of ball they got the chef in shefflin last night playing 36 minutes just as, as they called it, wearing that medium jersey <laughs> that was holding on for dear life. It's just the stitching is just begging for mercy. And he's just doing in Shefflin things, 14 points, seven rebounds last night. Uh, but I thought the difference is the guy that stepped up is Chase Hunter. 18 points last night, 8 of 15 from the field, didn't hit a three-pointer, had the incredibly massive basket and one play down the stretch. And I thought he was able to neutralize Caleb Love, who last night was 0 for 9, Preston. 0 for 9 from three-point range, 5 of 18 from the field. Arizona as a whole last night was 5 of 28 from three-point range. Yeah, they can't win like that. Nobody, majority no. of teams cannot win like that. But credit to, credit to Clemson. I thought, even though it was 77-72, was looking at the final score, they felt like the, like you said earlier, they felt like the be more prepared team. They felt like the better coach team, and they felt like the better team overall. It felt, not now obviously I'm not a Clemson fan, so maybe I was pulling for them to go, to go the other way, but it didn't feel like the game was ever really in question as I was watching it. Late, late Arizona was able to come back and, and tie it. They uh, pushed them, but they it still pushed just... them, and then Clemson pushed it back out to, a, I think it was a seven-point lead, 65-58. And Clemson had some opportunities to go up nine or ten, missed a few three-pointers, and I, I kind of thought that might have been where Arizona was able to all of a sudden take advantage, maybe because I think it was a possession which Clemson got about two offensive rebounds, had three looks at the basket, couldn't get it to go down that I thought would have maybe pushed the game out of control. But Arizona last night, and look, it's the same thing. You can say, well, Arizona played poorly. Well, that's you have to say the same thing then about when South Carolina would win games with the defense but it was because of South Carolina's defense that they were beating teams like Kentucky and Tennessee and going on the road and beating Mississippi States and Mississippis and so forth and so on. And I thought that's what it was with Clemson last night. Their defense was able to create problems for Arizona, and Arizona couldn't hit the broad side of the barn.
so you think that Kentucky fan on Blue Mania is gloating? You think he's like refreshing his post? Like, hey, I told y'all we made fun of it, but hey, maybe might have had a point. But the serious question is if you take Brad Burnell and put him with that type of Kentucky talent, what does that turn into? Or is or is this just a hypothetical? It's a hypothetical, but I thought about this last night and I refrained from tweeting, but it it is similar. Now Texas A and M doesn't have the national champion Texas A and M football doesn't have the national championship history like where you going that Kentucky this? does. But Texas A&M always seems to be out for the flashy hire. we got to go hire the big, bad, flashy name. we got to have the big, bad recruiting. we got to do all this stuff. And for once, it feels like they might have gotten it right. Okay. They went for the ball coach. A solid coach. A solid coach knowing that the brand name and everything else will take care. You might not have that top five class that you've had, that that flashy class uh, that you also spent a lot of NIL money on, but that he will land a top 15 class and then coach them up. They've got a ball coach in Texas A&M, hope, maybe, maybe with Mike Elko. And last night, I couldn't help but think, if you're Kentucky, you, you try and always, even I mean, even going back to the day of Billy Gillespie, who was a flat-out stinker and a bomb, you know, but he was a hot name. He was the flashy coach at the time. What would Kentucky be like with a Brad Brunell? Who's not going to recruit one and duns and all those kind of guys like he has at Clemson or excuse me like John Calipari has, but he's still because it's Kentucky he's going to get four and five stars. He's still going to land good basketball players, and then in turn run his system and his coaching style. And I was like, that 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 Kentucky fan. Give that guy a cookie gets, or a free gets, coffee he, this morning. He, he was on MVP. top of it. He was on top of it, and we 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 jostled him and we said, yeah, I don't know his answer. And uh, as was, as is, this is the most curious run because the majority of Clemson fans that I know are begrudgingly happy about this. Like, uh, yeah, I guess so. If you're a Clemson fan, if you're a Clemson fan, you're like, I'll take this first Elite Eight since 1980. You know what, Brad Brunell, you get another five years. Well, yeah, well, which is amazing, and I know the name has been floating around, but 14 years in a tenure is yeah. almost unheard of in today's college landscape. So I don't know whether that's a testament to uh, football being so, ses- so successful at Clemson that they just stopped paying attention over there, uh, him being maybe a likable. I don't know what it is, but 14 years hanging around in one place is a very long time. He, it's kind of it's Frank Martin esque. Martin just kind of, kind of kept grooving through winning enough that nobody was really complaining. Uh, but football was experiencing a wild period there with the end of the Spurrier era, the must the whole must champ thing. Then then COVID and football and and Shane Beamer, and and then much like Clemson, South Carolina baseball has kind of been wandering the wilderness, and people are more focused generally on baseball than they are on basketball so I, brad brunell just kind of doing it now elite eight run very little very solid little thing we'll get into that also yesterday boy speaking of football okay you you don't go to illinois and then you turn down talking to the media we'll let preston weigh in on something that happened with gamecock football yesterday you're listening to bill gunner preston thorne she's jen jensen it's the early game Bill Gunner for the Men's Clinic and Dr. Dan Balknight, who's helping restore the prime in men. That's right, because when you turn 40 years of age, as we get older, things start to change a little bit. We're not young anymore. Trust me, I'm learning that right now. We're not young anymore, and there are some certain changes that start to occur, and it can affect your mood. It can affect weight loss. It can affect hair growth. It can affect energy, stamina all across the board. And if these things are starting to happen to you, it's time to call Dr. Dan Balknight and let him 
him work with you because he will give you a individualized treatment plan specific for what your needs are. 803-875-MENS. That's how you can schedule an appointment today. Get a free testosterone test. It could be something as simple as low T. And if that's the case, Dr. Dan Boatnight will get you fixed up because there's nothing generic about you. So why settle for general medical care? Call the men's clinic today. 803-875-MENS. Tell them Bill Gunner sent you. I-126 eastbound before Greystone Boulevard, it appears there might be a disabled vehicle that could be just slowing you down just a little bit. So be careful going through that area. 74 will be our high today under sunny skies. More sunshine tomorrow, 79. A few clouds on Easter Sunday, but a high of 83. And we stay in the 80s through Tuesday before maybe another system comes in and some rain and a little lower temperature. So beautiful weekend ahead. But right now, just need to bundle up. It's 40 on the early game.
wide receiver coach. Yeah, wide receiver you, you know, uh, you know, I, it's uh, it's funny because you know I've been around a lot of offenses in my life, and as a player and as a coach, and I, I think what I wanted to be able to do was come in here and not just really ask Dow about what he's installing, but more just kind of see it on my own, and then see through the first couple of days when I was here in regards to just some of the OTAs and whatnot, where I could just see how he coaches what he's demanding, and then also continue to learn his offense, right? And uh, as I have gone through probably those first three or four days and seen how he's coached, see how he installs, uh, and then start realizing the type of offense that we run here, uh, the offense is very similar to something I've been through in my career, and uh, I'm pretty excited about that. And so it's helped that transition to understand how he wants it done, uh, I have a really good feel about where our guys are supposed to be, why we're running those concepts, or why we're running those plays, how you're supposed to get there, and uh, I think it's been it's been uh, it's been very smooth since the start, and uh, I'm very excited about his offense. 803-404-6100. That is the voice, the raspy voice of one Mike Furry. New wide receivers coach. I couldn't help but hear him talk yesterday and think, ooh, South Carolina's cornered the market on the raspy coach voice uh, with he, both he and Sean Elliott running the offensive room. I feel like there's a lot of, huh? Can you repeat that again, coach? A lot of lozenges. A lot of <laughs> lozenges just spread out around the coach's offices. You know, I'm losing my voice. Yeah. You guys are making me lose my voice. A lot of, <laughs> lot of lozenges. Interesting to hear him say that, given that, again, I feel like there is a significant tweak to the offense coming with Sean Elliott also arriving on campus. Yeah, I would assume so. That's the reason why he was brought here as as the run game coordinator slash tight ends coach. I wonder which one of those is first. I assume the run game coordinator is first. So there's a significant tweak. But maybe what Mike is talking about, the the verbiage of how they talk about routes, route trees, blah, 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 all the stuff that wide receivers and offensive dorks might get into. Because all of those things can be slightly different. You know, I might call it this and you might call it that. And we need to make sure we're communicating in the same way. So that makes a lot of sense. You got to sit back and say, oh, yeah, that's we call it this here or this is the same thing. So, yeah, that all that all tracks and that all makes sense. Uh, you hear him talk about that and coming together and working with Dow Loggins. I am interested from your viewing, like, because it, it feels like, well, it feels like to me from an outsider and for us that have never really been around a football staff that a Mike Furry, as you kind of said, would just come in and go, okay, that's your verbiage. That's how you, okay, sure, I'll learn it, and then I'll run it the way you want it. But these guys tend, and especially a guy, Furry's been in the NFL. He's been a head coach. He's got his own philosophies and his own decisions and how that kind of meshes, how you try to make that mesh while also at the same time understanding Dow Loggins is technically his boss. Yeah, and that that's where some of the conversations, hopefully they're conversations that don't lead to conflicts because players are always watching. And so any type of body language that's going from the coach when another coach says something, you see my another coach rolling his eyes or, you know, whatever. Players notice those types of things. It is, It could be, it's like, uh, you know, when I load the dishwasher, I put the forks down. When you load the dishwasher, you put the forks up. And now we're just over this never-ending. All those types of things will happen with these offensive coaches because they're all coming from varying, varying perspectives of how they think the offensive should be run. But ultimately, if we're in agreement, it will boil down to Dow's terminologies. 803-404-6100. Now, the other part of yesterday, Markwell Blackwell was supposed to speak last weekend reports rumors began to circulate that he could be out the door and heading to ohio state which which we got to get that order correctly there's rumors and then there were reports right so there were absolutely rumors right and there were actually reports exactly so you know like this is not just something that people were saying at the barbershop around the corner right these were literal and actual not reports. twitter rumors correct so I think that's very clear for us to say. And then yesterday he informed Steve Fink and the Sports Information de Department he did not feel like speaking. No. You don't get to inform us what you do. You, we tell you, you speak, and then you go speak. You don't tell us. I'm hey, interested to hear your a, take on it. I don't it, get okay. a chance. Hey, uh, 
Not today. Don't feel like it today, guys. No, that's not how this works. What are you talking about? You inform them. That's not how this works. You don't get a chance to just say, uh, not today. Not feeling it. Does he owe it to us to speak and yes. explain? Even if he's asked the question? Yes. Really? Yes, he made a... As, and this is why yeah, last week, earlier in this week, that already happened this week, when we talked about Michi having a conversation on Instagram, though it wasn't person to person, he did at least address That's why I told you I was... Idea. And you said you was big on it. I was waffling on it, but I'm coming around to it. That at least Michi, a young person, had to go out there and be accountable for his decision. This adult in a job who was absolutely, as reports say, thinking about taking another position, and you just get to slide off the back door and say, ah, I don't want to talk about today? No, that's not how this works. Not in, by any chance. And I don't know who gave the, the heads up or the thumbs up or who let him slide out of that, but that sh should absolutely not be how it be out of this works. I understand what you're saying. I guess I'm going to play slight devil's advocate on this just for the sake of doing it, but I almost don't mind it just because, as I've said, I, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming we'll see if he speaks at all. This spring, you still got several more days for him to speak. But as I've said, for South, for the sake of South Carolina's football program, the best thing you can do now is just have a quiet Correct. spring practice. Just quiet. We don't, you know, we'll play audio, but we don't need to be really discussing. They need to be, go over there and go into their cave and do what they need to do well, and be left alone. And and I, I this is a distraction, which is why I, I envision. To that point. I don't know how it went down because I don't know whether Marquell said, I don't feel like speaking today, or maybe Steve Fink and crew said, hey, maybe you shouldn't speak today. I don't, I don't know. Or, what or Shane Beamer just or Shane flat, Beamer flat said, said, I no, want to keep it not. quiet. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know how the reporting went down. Any way that it goes, whether it was from Shane Beamer or Steve Fink or Markel Backwell, the running back coach should be speaking because we, now we don't know anything about running back. So you're just not going to talk? But that's fine. You don't have to talk because when Shane Beamer comes up here, I need some of my journalists to ask him about this because ultimately somebody needs to be asked about these things that have reportedly were happening. Yeah, and Will points out Torian Gray did it last year. That was, uh, that was I think, a little bit different situation. But he also points out Marcus Satterfield did it also. Well, again, Satterfield, when he was turning down media, it was because, well, it wasn't going well. And that's, but that's so, that's so sorry. These same men are going to walk into these rooms with these athletes talking about, you need to be accountable and we need to stand up for our decisions and we need to be able to sit. Okay, Marcus, it's not going well. Talk about it, sir. Marquell, you were out the back door. Please tell us what was the conversation. You don't even have to tell me the truth. You can say, uh, uh, yeah, I heard from another coach this past weekend and, Ultimately, I'm deciding to stay with the Gamecocks. Go Cox. We could all say it's BS, but you, you got to say something, right? Something? We'll see if, he's, if he speaks at all. You're right. I think fans do want to hear about the running back room. What's going on in the running back room, Yeah, Mark just, well, just, just, hear, just hear what's, what again, what is what is going on in the, in the running back room. Uh, but, again, I also can kind of look at this and say, look, the, the quieter South Carolina spring practices, the better. That's all I can say. 803-404-6100. We will let you. Torian Gray. Torian Gray did actually speak yesterday. We'll let you hear a little bit from that. But coming up next, we may have, Preston may have opened a small can of worms. Because the next thing you know, we get a text in. This is from Ray. He says, by the way, forks up. The forks should be up. 803-404-6100. You're listening to the early game.
803-404-6100. That's how you can weigh in if you want to so do so. Chris Deering coming up in the next hour. We'll also talk a little Gamecock baseball. They lose last night 4-3 to three in a uh, one that they – that one could come back to hurt. Yeah, they needed to get that one. They were they were in control of that game, had a lot of opportunities. Got off to a great start last night and uh, could not quite get the job done uh, as they lose the opener of that series down there. They'll be back in action tonight. We will have the pregame on 107.5, the game, 645. First pitch scheduled for 7 o'clock uh, as the Gamecocks will head down to Alabama. Uh, they had a 2-0 lead last night. Looked like – and actually – Looked like they were going to kind of roll in that game. And then some really bad eras opened up the door, allowed a pop fly, uh, kind of had miscommunication between, I believe, the shortstop and the center fielder and allowed a pop fly to drop. And also, it's very early in the season, but our first conversation of who likes bunting? Ooh. First first conversation. We, could, we We will have that conversation later, but the bunt, it's always a – it's always up for a lot of conversation. And last night, it didn't work out well for, for the game cops, but it is worth something worth discussing. Late in the game, they got Cole Messina on third base to start the inning third. He was on uh, on third with, with no outs. Uh, they intentionally walked. I'm trying to think I'm trying to think of the exact order of how things went down. Uh, but uh, Alabama got an out, so it was a, a pop-up. They got an out, and then they walked. Alabama intentionally walked uh, Ethan Petri, so it was thir- first and third, and Talmadge LaCroix came up. This is where, you know, I, I don't know. I, if it works, do you say, what a great call? But it didn't work, so you say, that was a stupid call. That's, that's the same conversation we have about bunting a lot. Yeah. And to state my position on bunting, I feel it's very similar to free throws as far as, like, you're, you're a college Athlete, you should be able to get that done. I, yeah, uh, and it was a bit like that was the other thing is it looked uh, uncoordinated yeah. at best because I mean, granted, my baseball days have long been gone, but I remember practicing bunting, and it feels like when you see somebody go to bunt, there's no gray area. They either know how to do it or they don't. Correct. And Lee Croy last night. It, it looked foreign to him. The bat was all at an angle. It was just not, it was very ugly. And matter of fact, he, the first, the first one, I think he bunted up, popped up and they were able to get away with it, but then he popped it back up to the pitcher and South Carolina uh, spoiled a, a great opportunity. And then Alabama was able to push one across in the eighth inning, the bottom of the eighth inning. And they go on to win eight, uh, four to three last night. Uh, South Carolina gives up 10 hits. It just, they had eight hits. Again, they had opportunities, but couldn't get the job done. Well, I mean, it's the close game. and If you don't, if you don't watch it and you just see 4-3 on the road, it's like, okay, well, they dropped the first one to Alabama. But if you paid attention and you see the boss goes, you know they had a chance to to steal one early in the series. And that's, that's what really hurts more so than just you're going to lose in the SEC. But when you lose one that you could have had, that's, that makes it a little bit tougher. 803-404-6100. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later. But obviously, last night, a lot of the big news centered around college basketball. Clemson 77-72 victory over Arizona. They pulled the upset. And then I assume we uh, we believe that Alabama, they're a four seed. So by seeding and by Vegas's odds, that, and to me, to me, that was the bigger upset, though. I kind of thought Clemson would win last night. The Brad Burnell would, would coach his team to victory. I thought North Carolina would win that basketball game. That, to me, was actually the bigger upset. Alabama knocking off North Carolina than Clemson beating Arizona. Uh, why did you feel like that was a bigger upset? I, have, how much have you watched North Carolina this year? I know you've seen Alabama a good bit. Why did you think that was going to be a bigger upset? I really thought North Carolina, their size with Baycott uh, and then the length of Harrison Ingram would really give Alabama problems alone that they could muck up the game a little bit more than Alabama would have liked. I, I really thought that, that the guards for North Carolina could rotate. I'm not sure. Uh, the, the best player, he only had 18 last night, but the best player in the NCAA tournament right now might be Mark Sears. If you haven't watched him for Alabama last night, 40 minutes for him, seven of 14 from the field, two of seven three point range. And he had 18 points, which really out of Alabama's major scores, he was the low guy uh, last night. But 
I, I really thought that that they would be able to contain them. And, it, and, and almost to an extent, he drew so much attention that it allowed, allowed a guy like Grant Nelson to score 24 last night. Now, he did hit 10 of 13 from the foul line, but Grant Nelson was a really big part of that. And then Aaron Estrada was the other kid, the guard, the senior for Alabama that stepped up, and they really didn't seem to have an answer for him. It was almost like the Sears had the game he needed to have. R.J. Davis was yeah. pathetic last night. Yeah. You know, R.J. Davis and, and Caleb Love – to call them bad last night is an understatement. They were pathetic. R.J. Davis was 4 of 20 and 0 of 9 from three-point range. We'll talk more about that in another segment coming up. You're listening to Bill Gunner, Preston Thorne, Shi Jin Jensen. It's the early game. It's Jen with CHW Cabinetry in Lexington. The demolition that we had to do in our kitchen, oh, that was a nightmare to say, to say the least. Clint took everything down to the studs, had to pick out all new cabinetry, and while that may sound fun, it really wasn't, but it got a lot more fun when we found CHW Cabinetry in Lexington. They made it so much easier helping us find what we needed, put together accessories, and then we got that photorealistic rendering that helped pull everything else together in the kitchen. But kitchens are not only the only thing that they do. If you have a closet that needs more functionality, maybe your pantry is just a disaster, can't find anything in there, they can help with those kinds of storage options. If you need to create some kind of a workspace in your home, they can help you with that as well. I encourage you to go to chwcabinetry.com or give them a call today at 803-520-6837. And, of course, be sure to tell them Jen Jensen sent you CHW Cabinetry in Lexington. Passion from inspiration to installation. And it appears we do have an accident. I-26 eastbound at exit 97. The two right lanes are blocked. So definitely an early start to kind of snarling up traffic. I-26 eastbound at exit 97. You're going to want to stay left because the two right lanes are blocked. And we're looking forward to really a very nice weekend. 74 with sunny skies today. And then tomorrow, 79 under sunny skies. 83 for Sunday, and come Monday, looks for like we'll still be around 
uh, low 80s. So we'll take that through about Tuesday. Right now, though, you do want a jacket to head out the door. It is 40, but clear skies on the early game. Up and Adam, kids, 7 a.m. on a good Friday. Hope you're doing well as we get you ready for Easter weekend and all the fun that comes with Easter weekend. Flowers and obviously candy, as we discussed yesterday. Family pictures. Preston Thorne has, has the significant other picked out the plan for family pictures on Sunday. Yeah, we have we have a nice... Uh, bush okay on this assortment of bushes on the side of our house it makes for a nice floral background so we usually do something over there okay so yeah it, it works it's pretty convenient it's simple it works well uh normally i know a lot of people do at their church church uh, what do, church, do church the, works. the cross with that's been decorated mm -hmm. with the flowers jen jen are we the kids are out of the house now for you or are there still easter pictures you and the the pets <laughs> well we do try to you know the kids We'll be there. So, you know, we try to get together with them. Yeah, I have some fun with the pets, too. But there was kind of the debate, and Megan had sent me a, um, a TikTok video of a girl who was saying, you know, I've, I left the house. My mom just told me she doesn't love me. And th you hear the mom in the background, I never said that. She said, you did, too. You said, you you know, I'm too old for an Easter basket or something to that effect. And oh. so, you know, I, I think... My daughter still thinks there should be an Easter basket, which we still do a little something. But, um, you know, we'll see Good. what the bunny hides. Good old-fashioned Easter basket. Some Easter Easter egg hunting taking yes. place. Oh, it's fun. Uh, yes. Jen, again, tomorrow there's a great event down in Darlington. Mm -hmm. Obviously obviously the Carolina Cup. We had Toby Edwards on the Carolina Cup over in Camden. But we have uh, they have a great event. If you're around the Florence area and you want to take the kids out, they'll be doing an Easter egg hunt. In the on, infield at 1 o'clock. On the infield. They'll also have... Uh, track laps for charity. Track mm -hmm. laps for charity where you can drive. Uh, you're on your own car. Your own car. Around, around the, they do, according to Jen, and Jen was very disappointed, they do limit you to 70 miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, but okay. the, the track laps for charity over in Darlington tomorrow, if you want to get out to that and take the kids for an Easter egg hunt. We also have the Carolina Cup tomorrow down in Camden. We had Toby Edwards on. You can go check out all the horsies. And watch them race around tomorrow at the game. We'll actually be hanging out in the infield at the Carolina Cup. So we'll, we will be there as well. So a busy day, busy weekend. And that doesn't count, ba that doesn't count basketball games. It doesn't count opening. Well, it's, we're past opening day, but it doesn't count Major League Baseball. It doesn't count South Carolina Baseball. And today, Preston Thorne, we take a step in the right direction with the Atlanta Braves officially getting underway. They were supposed to start yesterday. Rained out, postponed, went ahead and postponed it on Wednesday. Today was actually going to be an off day for the Braves and the Phillies. They were going to play a game, then take Friday off to get ready for the Saturday-Sunday games. Uh, so the Braves and the Phillies will now play three straight days. This does mean the Braves will open playing 19 games in their first 20 days of the season. Sounds like baseball, man. You know, you got to play 162. I think it's like 162 out of 180. It's a grind, bro. It is. There's not a lot of days off, so... Listen, man, we, once, and that's the other thing about opening day is that once this thing starts, there is not many days off until until it ends. And it ends doesn't end until October, the late end of October. So, yeah, this is the start of a marathon. Spencer Strider, uh, I was lucky enough to be there two years ago 
in August when he set the rookie record for strikeouts in a game. It was an absolutely phenomenal performance by him. We didn't really dig enough into yesterday, even though he played for the other orange team in well, the upstate. What I'm just saying is, what do you do when, the, when they played for the other team, but now they play for your team? In, in pro professionally, we take him and we just ask him to not wear orange in any way, shape, or form while he's wearing uh, the Braves colors. But excited to see him today. Is, is he really now, I think, he's kind of, he's been the rookie Last year, he was kind of the, the, the almost we'll call the young phenom. Now, to me, he's kind of the seasoned vet who's going to be the leader of that staff, and he's shown what he's capable of doing uh, in his really his first two years on the mound. I'm, I'm kind of excited to see him this year try and live up to everything that he has built himself up to be. Is he bringing a mustache back? Mustache should still be there. I've not seen a recent picture. I'm going to assume, again, baseball, you know how these baseball players are. They can be a little superstitious. Uh, again, I've not seen a recent picture of Spencer Strider. Very but, thick mustache. But I would assume that the, the stash is back in, 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 in 24. And very tight pants also. Also a baseball staple, I believe. Of his, no, his he's his, I don't know if he's a custom or not, but he he goes pretty tight on the pants. Strider Strider last year, Preston Thorne, twenty and five on the season. Uh very impressive, obviously, with that. Struck out two hundred and eighty one guys last year to just fifty eight walks. It's beautiful. You uh, don't you don't hear many twenty game winners, especially in the in, in modern day baseball. So he's he's a certified ace for a staff and they'll obviously need it as the year goes along through two full years he did he did pitch in two games in 2021 through two full years uh he he uh is 20 or excuse me he is 32 and 10 overall so it's going to be exciting to see him so the braves and the phillies later on today uh, of course if you have mlb network or something like i do thankfully you'll be able to see that unless they then come home for the blacked out games that we'll never be able to see. But uh, Major League Baseball getting underway yesterday along with South Carolina Baseball taking on Alabama. They dropped that game four to three there in Tuscaloosa. They'll be back on on the field tonight. Again, you can catch it right here on 107.5 The Game. Quick lineup uh, so you got you got an idea for today. The women's basketball game, Preston, we're going to talk about this in just a second. Uh, the women, the pregame will start for that at 4.30 today. Women's pregame starting at 4.30. That will be on 98.5 WOMG. So don't tune in to 107.5 the game looking for the women's game. It'll be on 98.5 WOMG starting at 4.30 today uh, and then the game at 5 o'clock. So again, let me repeat this just in case you're kind of a little confused. The women's basketball game versus Indiana today, the Sweet 16 game, will be starting at 4.30. Pre-game, it'll be on WOMG 98.5, and the pre-game will start at 4.30. The game will start at 5. Tonight, 6.45 pre-game for South Carolina baseball against Alabama on 107.5. The game, 7 o'clock first pitch. I'll continue to mention that throughout the morning so we can make sure we're all on the um, – Make sure that we are all on the same page and get you to the right station for what you want to hear. Speaking of the women, Preston, Don Staley has put out a tweet. I don't know if this was a mistake or one of Don's jokes. She says it's Dame Day, D-A-M-E. No, that feels like that was a typo. Uh, it was. It was over two hours ago. So yeah, it was early. That feels like a typo. She typically types out, puts up game day. It's game day, and um, so I, I'm, I'm gonna go with typo on that one. Unless it's a woman, a reference to women, like a dame. Like, that's a very elevated person, female. So, you know, maybe. I have not checked to see if the Milwaukee Bucks are playing tonight uh, either. But I thought, I actually, that's why I wondered if it was. And the fact that she's left it up for two hours. Yeah. I don't think she, like, tweeted. Dawn's, we've seen Dawn go walking by the studio. Dawn's not somebody who I feel like wakes up. Two hours ago, it would have been about 5 a.m., wakes up, tweets, goes back to bed. I feel like when Dawn Staley yeah, day, gets up, Dawn Staley's started. up. The day has started, for sure. I don't know what the day consists I, of. Um, it usually consists of a workout and things of that nature. So the day has started. I imagine she might have tweeted it. She'll come back to it and maybe get it corrected. But that's, that is her typical deal. Because is really anybody going to say, hey, Dawn, you have a typo? You know, I mean. Everybody's like, uh, damn, Dale. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Sounds good, Coach. I, all I can imagine is the dog champ when when the dog sees Dawn get up. It's like, come on, <laughs> ten more minutes. <laughs> We're not. I'm not ready for this full on energy right now. 
I'm not ready for it. 803. Yeah, yeah but Champ's got to get ready, too, because, you know, Champ's on the podium for, for sure. press conferences big, and stuff like that. Big so. day. Mm-hmm. 803-404-6100. Uh, 15 and a half point favorites today. This is, it's just, to me, Preston, um, this is, is a time where South, it's the pressure that I think is the bigger opponent. Does this make sense? I don't know if it, for me, the pressure of being the one seed, being undefeated, everything that we brag about them, the, the pressure is the biggest opponent, not Indiana. Yeah, and, and in this particular game, I can't, obviously, I'm not going to get up here and say that I've been watching scouting Indiana basket, Indiana women's basketball, but from what I've read and what I've seen, the strength of Indiana's game is going down down in uh, in the paint. Um, unfortunately, they haven't met Carmilla Cardosa, Chloe Kitts, right. uh, or any of those women yet, so it feels like this is a positive matchup for poor South Carolina, for our strengths against their strengths. And I feel like those, if once those things equalize, then we, we should be good. It will be, again, that game, uh, obviously you'll be able to hear it on 98.5 WOMG. It will also be on ESPN as they get going. Oregon State, Notre Dame, if you're doing a little preemptive scouting, if you want to get a little preemptive scouting in, Oregon State and Notre Dame will play at 2.30 prior to South Carolina and Indiana. Again, the Gamecocks, 15 and a half point favorites right now. The over under set at 143 and a half. Uh, again, I think the last time, correct me if I'm wrong, the last time, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, the last time these two teams met, I believe was the COVID year, and they met down in the Bahamas, and Indiana won that ball game. Indiana won that ball game. Um, and so South Carolina and Indiana, that again, I believe that was. 2021 2020 i believe 2021 something like that i have to go back and look but the last time they met was in the bahamas and indiana actually gave south carolina a loss uh today it'll be a chance for revenge preston thorn we'll see how far dawn wants to reach back in the old the old motivation playbook and go hey revenge <laughs> game today all these new players are like coach we we were not here we yeah. were <laughs> That's the, those were the Frenchies. This is a whole new squad. That wasn't us. Yeah, it was, don't don't blame us for their mistakes <laughs> that season. I want to let I, me see. I was gonna say I, I, right now I have a struggle because looking at the bracket, I want Oregon State to beat Notre Dame, but do I or do I want to see South Carolina beat Notre Dame? I, I like it. I you like know, it. I like it. That that might be more mm -hmm. satisfying. Either way, Notre Dame has to go down. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Solid, solid thinking there. Notre Dame has to go down. I'm just going back and trying to fuck. Yes. 71-57 uh, was the score. This is back on, does it give me a date here? November 28th, 2019. Just like it was yesterday. Just like it was yesterday. Don't, don't you ever forget how you felt. 71. Oh, that this, one loss. Yeah. It's number five. It was number five, South Carolina against number 17, Indiana, 71-57. Indiana outscored South Carolina in the fourth quarter, 24-6. to You think Dawn remembers that? I think she's just writing 24-6 to six everywhere in the – Just, yeah. Just, yeah she's, been up, she's been up re-watching game film. She woke up this morning at 2.46 and just, this is the time. This Leo, is Leo Boston had 10 points that game. It was 5 of 6. A young Leo Boston. A young, a young Leo Boston. I have to go back and look. I don't even remember some of these. By the way, just, just to make sure, no no woman – from that team is still around. I know, like Jermaine Cousinard <laughs> was a young, happy freshman back then playing for South Carolina basketball. Just for the record, there was no no players from South Carolina that were that were around back then. While we're here, my my third favorite Gamecock of all time, um, Bria Bill signed a, a contract yesterday with the Las Vegas Aces. Oh, okay. So I just wanted I wanted to mention that because behind Eric Norwood and Dylan Thompson. Bree Bill is my third favorite game cock of all time. So I just want to mention that. Shout out to you, Bree Bill. You've got to get out of here. You got to. Yeah, I've got to get out there. We got to take the, take the take the youngins up to Fairfield for the for the afternoon morning. I guess. Go get them. Yeah, we'll be there. Go get them. Go have a happy Easter week. We will come back on Monday morning. No Gamecock Larry this morning. I hope he's okay. I hope he's okay. Clemson but did win yesterday. Clemson won. Baseball lost. It's a tough one. He was. Hopefully he's feeling okay this morning, but we will we will carry on. But we'll get into we'll we'll set up we'll get into that conversation. Yeah, I, this is this is kind of it for me for basketball. This is kind of it. I I, I just want to know. I just want to know what's the start bench cut on the weekends of the tournament. Very simple. Start the opening weekend. Incredible mm -hmm. bench 
this weekend. It's good enough. Cut the Final Four. I don't care. And then throwing in the championship game at 920, that's awful. Wow. Awful. Awful. We'll get more into that on Monday. Preston Thorne will be back. We will. Chris Deering joins us. The high school highlights of the week coming up next. You're listening to The Early Game. Preston here. Let me tell you about my friends at Absolute Glass, the premier glass company of the Midlands, offering auto, home, and business glass repair. So if your glass is damaged, shattered, cracked, or broken, they can handle the job. If it's a cracked windshield, that's no problem. They'll come out to your location and replace it for you, usually for free, and they'll work directly with the insurance company to take away the headache. Yes, they will come out to wherever you are, whether you're at school or home, work, doesn't matter. They will come out to you and give you a free quote for any job. Now, if you're looking to increase the value of your home with new windows or mirrors, Absolute Glass will come out and take care of that for you too. Windows, mirrors, shower enclosures. I say all the time, if you can see through it, Ray and Marianne at Absolute Glass can do it. So check them out online at absoluteglassinc.com. That's online at absoluteglassinc.com.
I-26 eastbound at exit 97. Two right lanes are currently blocked, so obviously you're going to want to stay left or find an alternate route because things backed up already there. I-26 eastbound at exit 97. 74 for the high today. 79 tomorrow, sunny both days, and then a few clouds on Sunday, but a high of 83, and that continues really until about Tuesday. So we're going to enjoy several days of spring-like weather. 40 right now on the early game. Up and Adam as we roll along, 721 on your Friday morning. Uh, also should be noted the final Friday of March, Jen Jensen. How about that? I mean, we have just flown through January. It's a busy month. It is, well, in all seriousness for just a second, and we're going to get to Chris Deering. And I'm not being funny, but I, some have said this. When you have, when South Carolina and Clemson, for that matter, when South Carolina and Clemson, when they play basketball as they have, the men's especially, we expect this from the women's to be where they are at. It speeds up the year when we're not kind of searching for content early on. When, yeah, it's, when, not a, it's not a slog. You're not slogging through. Yeah, and so it's, you know, one thing to say, South Carolina, obviously, the way they played basketball this year, making it fun in January, February, even into March, uh, fantastic. But it's sped up the unbelievable. Just think, you got this weekend, uh, next weekend will be the the, uh, the Braves' home opening series, and then the following weekend, two weekends from now, we've got the Masters going on. You've got the, uh, the Heritage taking place in three weeks. You've got South Carolina Spring game the week of the Heritage. I mean, you're going to blink and we're going to be into the month of May. So try and enjoy the weekend best you can. Try and enjoy it next week as best you can because joining us now to talk about this, it's spring break in a lot of places, and that means spring break high school tournaments, baseball, softball, soccer, probably lacrosse. Quite frankly, I apologize. I do not know much about lacrosse, but Chris, it is it is that time. You don't really have this in the fall with football. We don't have this where tournaments just break out all over the place. No, this is, you know, uh, you talked about things going so fast. That it, you got spring break tournaments coming up. And really and truly, after that, it's, it's maybe a couple of weeks left in the regular season's over, and then we're looking at playoffs. So, it, you know, it has gone quick. We, we, we just finished basketball, it seemed like, and spring sports have been moving forward, you know, since really the end of February. Uh, so we got a whole month in of, of spring sports and uh, things are, you know, teams are shaping up. You're seeing where everybody's falling. And, you know, I, I have a, maybe a different opinion on these spring break tournaments that, that we'll get to here in a minute. But, uh, yeah, a lot of tournaments next week. Uh, you know, I do think softball takes this time off, maybe lacrosse, but they don't have quite as many tournaments. But baseball and soccer is full, full steam ahead, looks like, next week. Well, let's uh, let's get in. I tell you real quick. Uh, I believe was it last weekend because I saw photos coming out. The prep red zone. Uh, was there another combine that I saw some pictures of? Yeah, we had a combine last week at West Lawrence. Um, our boy uh, guys Ian Garrett and Thomas um, Thomas Grant went over to to West Lawrence. Uh, really good combines. A lot of good numbers coming out of there. A lot of good players. Uh, a lot of good players here from the Midlands uh, had a good showing. I think that's where. There's not one here in the Midlands. I think that's where a lot of the guys from this area elected to go. What was over to uh, West Florence, uh, and a good show by a lot of the guys here locally. And then we have two more left. Um, actually, this weekend, obviously, we're taking off for Easter weekend. But then next weekend, there will be one in North Carolina. This is a combined combine with with the North Carolina coaches as well. So we'll be in North Carolina next weekend, and then I think the weekend after that 
back in South Carolina for Spartanburg and York on a Saturday, Sunday. So I have two in South Carolina that, that following weekend. And, you know, going to what you just said about playoffs for spring sports, uh, you also honestly have spring practice for a lot of uh, high schools starting to kick off here in about the next 45 days as well. So a lot a lot to get to. And let's start, though, with some tournaments and get going with a classic. It's uh, one that is a tradition uh, not too far from where we're sitting at baseball, the Forest Acres Classic. And looking ahead, Bracket A has AC Flora, Dutch Fork. Uh, I'm not familiar with Miller. I believe that's going to be Miller School, but Brooklyn Casey. And then Bracket B going with River Bluff, Oceanside, Dorman, and Airport, another loaded Forest Acres Classic. Yeah, a lot, a lot of ranked teams you just talked about right there. Um, that Miller School, yeah, that's out of uh, Virginia. They come down just about every year for this tournament. Um, really good program. Uh, they, they've, they've made it to the championship before. I don't think they've ever won it, um, if my memory serves correct. But, you know, you look at this field, and, and you got a, a ranked Dorman team in 5A. you got a ranked River, River Bluff team in 5A. Um, Airport has already, believe it or not, Airport has already won their region. Uh, they've already clinched, cl- wow. clinched their region championship, and, and they're number four in the state in 4A. And then you got a really good Oceanside team who's two and 2A, number two and 2A, and they beat a, a really good Somerville team this week. Uh, Oceanside's loaded again, just like they were last year. So a lot of good, a lot of good uh, talent in that tournament. We didn't even mention Dutch Fork and Flora, who also are two really good programs. 803-404-6100 if you want to uh, weigh in on any of this this morning. Uh, another one taking place, um, or I believe this is softball, uh, is the 2024 South Carolina Diamond Invitational. Uh, you've got getting going. It, this starts, by the way, next Wednesday. Tell me a little bit about that. This is, this is baseball as well. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, and it's over at Blythewood. You know, this is a newer tournament, but it's been around for a number of years now. And they do a really good job over there at Blythewood as well. Just as uh, Andy Hallett does at AC4, these tournaments are run very well. You've got a lot of schools that want to come play in these tournaments because of how well they are run. And, and again, you know, you look at that field, um, you got Dreer, Cardinal Newman, Blythewood, Northwestern, South Florence, Chapin, T.L. Hanna, and, and Lexington. And, and out of that group, Blythewood's number four in 5A. Lexington is number five in 5A. And then you got a Dreher team who's not ranked. We haven't had rankings come out in two weeks. Um, so I think we should get something next week, hopefully, uh, uh, updated rankings in baseball. But that Dreher team, 11 and three, they're, they're not bad. They've been playing really good baseball. Um, like I said, Blythewood's really good. And then Lexington um, is, you know, one of the top programs always in the state. And, you know, and Chapin, um, we haven't talked about Chapin much. Chapin beat uh, Lexington two out of three last week. So they don't have a region game this week, but Lexington and River Bluff are playing region games this week. And actually they play at 2 o'clock today. Uh, they split the first two games 1-1. One, one. So whoever takes that series is still – Still could be in contention for a region title, and the other one might have some work to do. So a lot of good teams right there in, in Blythewood, too. Chris Deering joining us as he does each and every week. There's a lot of tournaments. we got some soccer to discuss, a lot to get to, the pa- Nike Palmetto Cup. We'll let him get into all of that uh, as a lot more to talk about regarding the high school highlights of the week. We'll roll along. You're listening to Chris Deering joining us, Bill Gunner. She's Jen Jensen. It is the early game. Spring cleaning is upon us, and you know what? That's never any fun. There's so many other things you'd rather do. It's a big Easter weekend. There's basketball on. Baseball's taking place. Spring break is upon us. You don't want to clean. Let the pros at Zeros Carpet and Air Duct Cleaning do it for you. With their patented ZR Water technology, it cleans better than detergents, and it does not leave behind a sticky, soapy residue. So you can take advantage of the spring sale. Mention me, Bill Gunner, at 107.5 The Game, and get three rooms of carpet clean for $120. 
$29 plus a free hallway. You can book online at zeroscolumbia.com or you can give them a phone call, 803-262-4020. Again, take advantage of their spring sales. One of the final days of March, and you want to take advantage of this. Three rooms of carpet clean for $129 plus a free hallway. All you got to do is mention me, Bill Gunner at 107.5 The Game. 803-262-4020. Zero S, spell it backwards or forwards. It's the right way to clean. I-26 eastbound at exit 97. Things getting backed up in that area due to an accident that has the two right lanes blocked. Again, I-26 eastbound at exit 97. Sunny skies, 74 today, 79 tomorrow. Get into the low 80s then for a couple days after that. So beautiful weekend on tap. Definitely feeling a little bit more like fall. And uh, right now, you do want a jacket, though, because it's 40 on the early game.
734 as we get you going on the Friday morning. I want to remind you the craft beer card is back. You can spend $30 at a brewery with 12 craft beer locations, a $360 value, and it's only costing you $79. Go to 1075thegame.com and click on Sweet Deals. Again, you can spend $30. Uh, it'll be basically as average as out to $30 a brewery, 12 craft beer locations, $360 value. I know I'm not an overly smart man, but 12 times 30 is 360. <laughs> you get the point. So $360 value. Jen, I did get that right, correct? As you gag in there from my math, just absolutely questionable. No, I was laughing when you said, you know, you're not a smart man. Over, um, not overly yeah, smart. Spend $30 at a brewery at 12 cash beer, at craft beer locations. There you go. And only you pay $79. $79. Go to 1075thegame.com. And click on Sweet Deals. Back out to the Love Chevy phone lines for the high school highlights of the week. So much to get into. Uh, we have not, Chris, we've not really done a good job uh, so far of talking so much baseball. We've had lots of high school basketball. There's been some crazy stuff happening on the high school football circuit, realignment as well. Uh, but give us a quick breakdown. We, we talked about the Forest Acres Classic. Uh, you also talked about the tournament over in Blythewood that's going to be really good, the South Carolina, the 2024 South Carolina Diamond Invitational. Uh, but tell us a few players here in the Midlands that have really stood out uh, from what you've been able to gather here so far through the season. Yeah, if you get over to the Forest Acres Classic this week or next week, Bill, you can see some some really good players. You know, so let's start with that Air Force team. Who'd like to say they've already clinched the region? They are number four in the state in, in 4A and, and playing really good baseball. They got some kids. Um, Landon Jeffcoat's been really good. Hunter Epps has been good for them. Uh, Mil Miller Har Harrelson has been good on the mound and at the plate for that team. Um, Graham Whittle's another name to look at. Just a lot of talent on that Air Force team, and they're, they're playing very well right now. When you look at uh, our River Bluff squad, that, that, like I said, we've talked about them a little bit. I think you got to start with Bo Hollins with River Bluff. The, the son of former Major League player Dave Hollins is, is he's going to be a draft pick. He's a South Carolina commit, and just to see where he ends up, it's going to be very interesting to watch over the next few months. Um, Kobe Reynolds is another guy for River Bluff, and then BJ Etheridge. Uh, a good two-way player, pitcher, and, and position player for the River Bluffs. So that, that's a couple of names to watch there. Um, Chapin's also at Edward Forest Acres Classic. Um, I think Maddox Floyd, Caden Reeves, that's two names to look out for for Chapin. So a lot of talent there. And if you go over to Blythewood, uh, I think you got to look at that Lexington team. Um, a name that's very familiar with, with a lot of people in this area, Brandon Cromer. Um, he, he's been very good for the Wildcats. And then Trad Burton and Jackson Burton, two 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 really good players for the Wildcats. Um, I think Trad or Jackson might be their top pitcher right now, so a, a lot of talent there as well. Um, we look at Blythewood, uh, really like that team a lot. They're young, um, fighting through some injuries, but I think they're getting healthy now. Uh, Alex Myers, he's a Walford commit. Uh, he's shortstop, really good player. Landon Penfield. Excuse me, and Harrison Collins. So, a lot of talent in these are our tournaments. You know, they have a home run derby at both of them. So, it'll be fun to get out there and watch a lot of these players play this week. Yeah, definitely. As we flip the calendar into the the month of April, and you hit the uh, spring break for a lot of schools, the majority of schools. Uh, you mentioned that Forest Acres Classic, and again, the 2024 Diamond South Carolina Diamond Invitational uh, taking place. Just just again, as as Chris was mentioning, the Forest Acres Classic will get going Monday, April 1st. Uh, it'll kick off bright and early, Dorman and Airport. Uh, followed by River Bluff and Oceanside, Miller School and Dutch Fork, and Brooklyn Casey and AC Floor. That'll be a, a great day of baseball, and that is Monday if you're looking to get out uh, and kind of do something on spring break. You can head over to AC Flora, and then that'll be followed up, as we mentioned, by the Diamond Classic, or excuse me, the Diamond Invitational that will get going on Wednesday, uh, April the 3rd. And again, Dreer, Cardinal Newman, Blythewood, Northwestern, South Lawrence Chapin, and T.L. Hannah and Lexington. So some great tournaments uh, taking place. Uh, something else that's taking place as well is the Nike Palmetto Classic. Always a great event, and this will get going as well. Some soccer to talk about uh, Break this one down a little bit for us. Yeah, on the, the Nike Palmetto Cup, it's, 
run by the, the Kevin Heisey and Kyle Heisey, the coaches over at Great Collegiate, and, and they do a fantastic job. You know, Kevin was just named athletic director recently at Great Collegiate. Uh, those guys have been around for a long time, and they do, really, really, do a really good job with this tournament. Um, they're bringing in, you know, eight teams to play this week. I think this starts on Tuesday. Uh, and, and one bracket, you have Aiken, Gaffney, T.L., Hannah, and St. James. And then the other bra- bracket, you have Blythewood, Great Collegiate, Hannah Hand, and Westside. Uh, I expect really good soccer. And, and I need to pull this back up. I think this is over at Saluda Shoals. Is that correct, Mill? Saluda Shoals Park, yes, sir. Yeah, so over at Saluda Shoals off of uh, St. Andrews Road in Columbia. So I've been over there quite a few years to watch that tournament as well. Again, another very well-run tournament and looking forward to a lot of great teams playing in, in that um, the next week. A lot, uh, a lot of high school sports uh, that we will continue to cover as, as we roll through the season. Uh, a little bit of softball news. What can you give us as far as the softball taking place right now across the state? Always a great state for softball. Great state for baseball and softball. Softball, uh, what can you give us there locally? I said, I think a lot of softball teams take this uh, spring break week off. Um, and I, if there's any tournaments out there next week, uh, I'd appreciate coaches th- throwing it to my um, direct messages on Twitter. Uh, that would be good to know. But I think a lot of teams take off next week. But on softball side of things, I think, you know, I think Chapin's been really good. Uh, I know they have a couple of players. Andy Andy Dirks, I think her name is. She She's a really – She's a really good player. She's a Division One softball player. Um, she she plays for Chapin. She's been very good. I know they beat White Knoll last night, eight to nothing. Um, Lexington's been good. AC Floor has been pretty good this year. And from what I understand, I, I, I'm going to try to get over there. Not next week, obviously, but the week after. Uh, Great Collegiate has been outstanding this year. Uh, I've heard some some things about that team and. Uh, they have Division One players at maybe several positions on that team. So, trying to get over to see Great Collegiate in, in the next two weeks in, in softball because I think they've been really, really good. Uh, don't have any softball rankings. I, I wish there was a, a statewide rankings in softball that would help, you know, some of us in the media out. But no, no rankings in softball. But I do know we got some really good teams here in the Midlands. Chris, we always appreciate it. Obviously, a very busy time of the year for you with so much going on, and we'll try and get into more of it next week. Of course, we'll be out at Charwood Golf Club for our golf tournament. You do have spring golf taking place as well. I know a good buddy of mine, Chad McMurray, his boys are playing for the Gilbert Golf Team. So maybe next week, see if you can dig up some golf information uh, around the state to share with us while we're out at Charwood. Yeah, I'll look up some golf next week for us. That'll, that'll sound good. We'll definitely do it. Thank you, as always. Chris Deering joining us from uh, Prep Red Zone uh, does a fantastic job. They've also got some combines. Go and check them out on the web, prepredzonesc.com, where you can check that out. We'll come back. We'll wrap up our number two. Uh, look into a few other things. We've got some audio from South Carolina coaches yesterday. Let you hear a little bit from Coach Torian Gray and Coach Mike Furry. We'll also look ahead to tonight or this afternoon, 5 o'clock, uh, this afternoon's women's basketball game and look back at last night's Sweet 16 games. You're listening to the early game.
Bill Gunner for Mid-State Roofing. Oh, it's beautiful today. And if you heard Jen, it's going to be beautiful for, for a few days. But then about next Wednesday, more rain. Is your roof ready for that? Because for nearly 30 years, Mid-State Roofing has been the proven leader in the roofing and waterproofing industry. And if you had a few leaks or you noticed a few issues the last few days when we had those storms roll through, it's time to call Mid-State Roofing. And guess what? Even at 746 a.m., no matter where you are, whether you're in Columbia, whether you're in Florence, whether you're in Myrtle Beach, Mid-State Roofing has an on-call technician ready to help you. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It doesn't matter the time. Mid-State Roofing is there to make sure they get you a maintenance contract and take care of that roof. So give them a phone call, 803-356-1919. Again, that's 803-356-1919. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Mid-State Roofing is there to help you. So if you've got a leak, let Mid-State Roofing take a peek. Thank you to Chris Deering for joining us as he does each and every Friday for the high school highlights of the week. Obviously, a lot to cover there as it is a busy, busy, busy time of the year between baseball. You've got the uh, the soccer tournaments going on. So many great things taking place here in the Midlands. A lot of things that you can get out and go and hang out with. And that's the same with us here at 107.5 The Game. Let me give you a rundown of all the great things we've got going on today from 12 to 3. 12 to 3, you can go by and hang out with uh, Terry and Tyler. 12 to 3, Sound and Images live show at Quaker Steak and Lube. That's Bluff Road at I-77. It's a restaurant, it's a travel center, and it's a bowling alley. Oh, we'll be out there bowling. That's right. You can come by and you can bowl and you can grab some food and you can hang out, talk a little sweet 16 with the guys. So, again, that is 12 to 3 today. Terry will be out at Sound and Images live show at Quaker Steak and Lube. Again, that's off of Bluff. That's on Bluff Road off of I-77. Yeah, there's a lot there. There's a lot going on. I've driven by it. I usually drive by it when I'm leaving football games uh, uh, late in the evening. It's a restaurant, a travel center, a bowling alley. You, you'll have a blast. Go by and see that. Uh, as far as programming, listen closely to this because I know some of y'all go on Twitter or message boards. Today, the women's basketball game will air on 98.5 WOMG, okay? The women's game. The pregame starts at 4.30. The pregame will start at 4.30. The game is scheduled to start at 5 o'clock. Notre Dame and Oregon State are playing at 2.30 today. So just in case something happens, that game goes 4 or 5 overtimes. You get the point. Game runs long. But our pregame will start at 4.30. Game will start at 5, and it will air on 98.5 here in Columbia on WOMG. So just... Be prepared for that if you're here in the Columbia market. Uh, baseball tonight, 
That will be here on 107.5, the game. Pre-game will start at 6.45 for that. Pre-game, 6.45. If you want to listen to South Carolina and Alabama baseball, Gamecocks dropped game one last night, 4 to 3. Pre-game will be on 6.45 p.m. And then, obviously, first pitch scheduled for 7 p.m. here in Columbia. So, again, just a reminder, if you're listening to the baseball game tonight, it is on 107.5 The Game. If you want to listen to the women's basketball game, 5 o'clock against Indiana in the Sweet 16, it will be on 98.5 WOMG. That's how we'll do all of that. So just kind of stay tuned for that uh, later on today. And then tomorrow from 1130 to 145, Elijah Campbell and Terry Ford will be live at JT Kia's on Killian. JT will be giving away a car. Elijah and Terry will have a Gamecock, some Gamecock baseball tickets for the Texas A&M series. We got a lot going on, just like the high school highlights of the week. So much going on in that right now. So we got a lot going on here as we roll through the day. 803-404-6100. There was a, a story... And I don't know how to necessarily address it. Um, The good news is that it had a a phenomenal ending yesterday. If you didn't see uh, Chris Smelly, uh, former Gamecock quarterback, Chris Smelly was kayaking in the ocean uh, of interest. uh, Our buddy who comes on with us, uh, Brian Edwards of VegasInsider.com, happens to live in that area and he was sending me text messages uh they were doing a little more updating just than than just the twitter updates that we were doing through the day but uh yesterday chris smelly went uh kayaking around 8 30 a.m and late yesterday afternoon they had not found him they did end up finding him yesterday about two miles off the coast uh kind of a crazy story according to uh, Brian Edwards, again, a Vegas insider, he was telling me it's been a red flag all week. They've had red flag warnings all weeks, waves that they do not usually have. He actually said it was similar conditions to the unfortunate situation when Ryan Mallett passed away and drowned. Um, so, you know, a lot of, lot of uh, praise there, a lot of good vibes, good feelings that they were able to find Chris Smelly, who, again, uh, he was located by the uh, U.S. Coast Guard late yesterday evening, about 734 in the evening. So good news there on what could have been a very bad story. But I uh, wasn't sure how to address that, given that it, uh, not a sport, not, not only not a sports story, but also it did turn out well. And Chris Smelly found safe and sound uh, on his kayak, but was about two miles uh, out to sea from from the reports I read. So uh, good for him. 803-404. 6100 next hour we'll get into a little bit more baseball obviously last night's game south Carolina losing four to three giving up a run in the eighth inning uh, this was a game uh, giving up two by the way in the seventh and one in the eighth i mean south Carolina was in control of this game and that's what makes it even worse you're up three to one uh through uh, through half of seven uh and you give up two in the seventh to tie it one in the eighth cannot convert in the ninth with a guy on second just this is a, this is a bad loss and it's a Alabama's a good team so it's not like you lost to a bad team but this is a bad loss that South Carolina had in control they have got to bounce back tonight they they I really would like to see them win this series if they take two of three this weekend if they win today and tomorrow then that's a great way to close out the series and pick up a series win by the way tomorrow's game right here on 107.5 the game 145 pregame two o'clock first pitch but that's a that's a game that South Carolina needs to have tonight I really really think they need to have it, especially after last night in which you got some pretty good performances Eli Jones last night a very solid performance to start the game he gave you six innings gave up six hits two earned runs struck out five walked one faced 25 batters again I thought it was a pretty solid performance for him Chris Veach came on to pitch two-thirds of an inning gave up one run walked a batter uh, just faced three people, and then Garrett Ganey took the loss, pitching one and a third innings, giving up four hits, an earned run, did strike out two. We'll kind of continue to monitor that, talk a little bit more about it coming up in hour number three. We'll also get back into the Sweet 16 from last night and look ahead to tonight, and we'll listen to Coach Mike Furry, new wide receivers coach, and we'll listen to Coach Torian Gray, defensive backs coach for South Carolina. A lot to do, one hour to do it. It's the early game.
And it's Friday morning and uh, just a couple accidents to let you know about. I-77 northbound before Percival Road. Uh, that is exit 15 on I-77 northbound. And two right lanes are blocked, I-26 eastbound at Broad River Road. So definitely slowing things down there at exit 97 on I-26 eastbound. Beautiful forecast on tap. Going to be great this weekend. Looking for a high of about, let's see, 74 to be exact. 79 tomorrow, 83 for a couple days before it gets cooler next Wednesday, but we won't deal with that right now. It uh, currently is 42 on the early game. It's just that time of year where we have an absolutely phenomenal kind of few days of sporting events. And I we get you up and we get you ready. Welcome into the early game. Preston Thorne having to head off to school, take the kids, take his students with him, work on future teachers for us. And so he's dipped out. He'll be back on Monday and we'll carry you through one more hour. But it is, there's so much to get into, whether... You want to talk about last night's Sweet 16, in which, according to the seeding, two upsets occur. It was Clemson 77, Arizona 72, and yes, I kind of saw that one coming, Partial, partially because Arizona, they choke, they gag. There's no other way to describe it. Arizona, that is a program, I don't know how many people that listen to our station here in South Carolina really pay attention to Arizona basketball. Uh, I started following them in the mid nineties uh, when Lute Olson was coaching and then they had Miles Bibby and uh, Michael Dickerson and Miles Simon and they went on and they beat Kentucky and won the national championship. Uh, they would land a string of incredibly talented recruits and I would follow them, but they were always known to blow it. I mean, I, th this isn't like, oh, man, this just happened in the last four or five years where Arizona loses a game in the NCAA tournament. They shouldn't. Uh, this is essentially 25 years of just gagging uh, with really good teams, and, and I felt like last night might be the case. Clemson was a little bit too physical for them, a little bit too hard-nosed, uh, and Clemson goes out and wins the basketball game, and Tommy Grady gets absolutely outcoached by Brad Brunell last night. And the Tigers now move on to the Elite Eight, first trip to the Elite Eight since 1980 for them. And they'll face Alabama, a team that they actually already beat this year in Tuscaloosa. And that was the other upset of last night, the Crimson Tide doing away with North Carolina. That one was actually a surprise to me. I thought North Carolina would be able to hold on, would be able to handle uh, Alabama. I thought that they would be able to handle that style of play and that style of athletic ability that Alabama brings to the game. But R.J. Davis last night, and again, I, same thing can be said for former North Carolina guard Caleb Love in the Arizona game. R.J. Davis, pathetic in the loss to Alabama last night. Uh, Davis had led the Tar Heels the majority of the season, was 4 of 20 last night. He was 0 of 9 from three-point range, finished the game with 16 points. He was 8 of 9 from the foul line, and that's a guy that they relied heavily upon, and R.J. Davis, I mean, there's just no other way to describe it. He absolutely let them down. Uh, Alabama, on the other hand, the focal point, for the North Carolina defense was Mark Sears, and he played all 40 minutes. Sears is incredible. He's 
right now he is that kind of guy, and he's getting help too. Um, he is that kind of guy who can explode and maybe carry his team much in the same way Kimball Walker did with Connecticut years ago. Mark Sears could potentially carry Alabama to a national championship, maybe a, a, a Final Four. We'll see if he's able to get past Clemson on Saturday, maybe get some past to Connecticut. I think Connecticut beats Illinois on Saturday as well. Uh, but keep an eye on Mark Sears. Last night, of the four major scores for Alabama, he was he was the low man. He only had 18. But they got a, he got a lot of help last night. Grant Nelson, the big forward for Alabama, 6'11", 230-pound senior uh, with quite the mustache. Last night, 24 points for him in that game. And I think that was the surprise for me in the Alabama game is the way Alabama's post players were probably able to get the better of Armando Baycott and Harrison Ingram last night. Baycott turned in his usual performance, 19 points, 12 rebounds. I believe he is finally, finally done with college basketball. I believe he is out of eligibility. But you looked at the stats last night. Alabama's big guys were essentially able to go toe-for-toe, toe-to-toe with the North Carolina big guys. And that, to me, was a big part of it. And in the guards for Alabama, uh, Aaron Estrada was another guy that was great last night. 35 minutes, 9 of 17 from the field, had 19 points in that game, grabbed four rebounds as well. So Alabama moves on. Alabama and Clemson now will be set for Saturday. And then in the top half of the bracket, it will be Connecticut and Illinois. Connecticut-Illinois will be the first game on Saturday, 6 9 on TBS and Clemson and Alabama the game of course out in Los Angeles will be at 8 49 so Tiger fans you're going to need a nap on Saturday uh, to get ready for that but it'll be the six seed Al- uh, Clemson Tigers against the four seed Alabama Crimson Tide with a trip to the final four on the line for that again Illinois and Connecticut in the first game coming up tonight Tonight, you get another great slew of games. It'll get going at 7 o'clock. North Carolina State and Marquette. Uh, I don't call North Carolina State a Cinderella. A little bit too much of a big name for me. He's won a championship before, won two championships, I should say. Uh, Obviously, the last one coming under Jim Valvano. Marquette and Shaka Smart. Uh, I like Marquette in this game tonight. I think the NC State run ends tonight but keep an eye they're hot obviously running through the acc tournament and then of course running through uh right now the first two the first weekend first two games of the uh acc excuse me of the ncaa tournament uh and then after that not long after that about 30 minutes tonight gonzaga and purdue i think purdue's playing really probably as well as anybody else in this tournament it feels like and i said this on monday it feels like we're heading for a Connecticut Purdue collision course national championship game, which just sounds awful. It just sounds ridiculous. I think the best two games of the night come in the nine o'clock section, the second session of games. Duke and Houston should be a lot of fun. I was ready to, to bury Duke. I was ready to throw them on the scrap heap. They had a good weekend last weekend. I think their athleticism does match up with Houston. Can they score enough against that Houston defense to get themselves to the Elite Eight? That should be a great one out in Dallas at American Airlines Center. 9.39, the rough start time for Duke and Houston. And I'm telling you right now, if you can do it, if you've got the ability to do it, Best game of the night likely comes in the very last one, Creighton and Tennessee. I think that's going to be an absolutely phenomenal basketball game. It's going to have to be a nap somewhere in there for me today. I'm going to have to have some coffee maybe around 9 o'clock to be ready for it. Creighton and Tennessee late tonight. I've got Creighton in my Final Four. By the way, I lost a Final Four team last night in in North Carolina. But I've got Creighton. I've got Houston still in the Final Four. I had Auburn and North Carolina on the other side of the bracket. That Creighton-Tennessee game should be absolutely phenomenal tonight. So there's your schedule of games for uh, schedule of games for tonight's Sweet 16 lineup. Other things going on. Atlanta Braves get going today. Spencer Strider. Opening day starter for the Braves. Ronald Acuna is back. And earlier this week, Brian Snitker talked about if Ronald Acuna can be even better this season than he was last year. I'm sorry, which cut is that? It is from yesterday on 13. Number 13 yesterday. 
he does. I mean, he's had a really, and 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 he's had a glitch. That was a that was a new one for us. Well, that was kind of special. Should we try it again? Do it one more time. Uh, the magic of live radio on display on a good Friday. I have no idea why it is not playing. It's going to cut into how I was handling this segment uh, because we were also going to get to Dawn Staley. <laughs> Let me do a little sample on that one and see what happens. <laughs> just, I mean, b- behind the scenes. Okay, so you don't yes, have to let, me, to let me know if we, let me, uh, <laughs> again, the magic of live radio on full display. Uh, the Braves, again, get going to, they are uh, favorites in today's game against Philadelphia, Spencer Strider on the mound for the Braves this afternoon. Again, they were supposed to play yesterday. It was postponed. They were going to have today off. They will now play 19 games in 20 days. So not really the way you might want to start things, but Spencer Strider, Zach Wheeler uh, taking place uh, later on today. Uh, first game, by the way, if you want, uh, we've got a full day of, of Major League Baseball. Milwaukee at the New York Mets uh, getting going at 140. But if you want a nice full day of Major League Baseball, you've got that. So, again, that kind of adds in. Into it. And of course, this evening or this afternoon, late this afternoon, five o'clock, we have women's basketball. The Sweet 16 underway at 2.30 today when Notre Dame and Oregon State take to the court. Following that game, again, will be South Carolina and Indiana. Re- programming note, again, reminder, you can hear South Carolina and Indiana on 98.5 WOMG here in Columbia. I want to again stress that so that you're not flipping over here looking for the women's game. The women's game on be, will be on 98.5 WOMG, 4.30 pregame, 5 o'clock start time. Don Staley speaking with the media yesterday and talking about how loose they feel. Um, I, I mean, I, we got a pretty loose team. Um, so you saw the beginning of practice, and they were pretty focused for about 30 minutes. And then they went into a mode of being really loose, um, but but focused. I think they're they're probably more focused than they've ever been, but for for a certain amount of time in practice. So I'm, I'm real thankful that the NCAA only gave us 60 minutes because I couldn't take any more than 60 minutes. <laughs> now you got Dawn's honesty. We've known it for a long time. Uh, that's a that's a good way for coach to describe it. I guess the the best way there is just get her team on, get the team off. Sixty minutes. Uh, they are they are feeling good now. One thing about today, we joked about it earlier. One of South Carolina's losses, very few losses over the last five years, but one did occur in 2019 down in the Bahamas. Uh, they lost to Indiana 71-57, and in that game, they were outscored 24-6 to in the fourth quarter. Don Staley reflected on that last loss to Indiana back in 2019 yesterday. Well, with, with this team, nothing. With me, I, I, it's a the vivid game that I remember us losing um, in the Virgin Islands. Um, I actually look back at that box score. They scored 24th quarter points. We scored six. Yikes. Um, it, was a good, it was a really good game. It was a very physical basketball game. Um, and it was probably one of the games that, I mean, we haven't lost very many of them, so I remember the ones that we that we've lost over the past couple of uh, seasons. Um, But well-coached team, did what they needed to do to win. Um, But something good actually came out of that that particular loss. We ended up winning that that tournament in in the Virgin Islands on on, on points. So that was kind of cool to do that um, in Aaliyah's hometown. And we had had an island party after that. It was pretty (laughs) cool. Don Staley there talking about today's game and reflecting on the 2019 loss. Uh, Jen, we laughed about it earlier. Uh, she, you heard her mention it to start that. She, she, the players, no players from that team are on this team. It's completely different, totally different teams. No questions about it. 
but Dawn Staley, that stuck with her. And yeah. you heard her just mention it. She went back and looked at the box score. That's what we talked about. It was a close game, back and forth. Carolina lost by 14, but they were up going into the fourth quarter and outscored 24 to 6. And it stuck with her. You heard her kind of mention that. So oh, yeah. you, you better believe that while the players might not be motivated necessarily for revenge. She's got a sticky note somewhere with just 24 6. There's a, there's a mm-hmm. receipt kept somewhere. 803 404 6100. We'll get back into a little bit of the Braves. Chris weighs in this morning on the Braves and says the question with the Braves is can they muster more than one win in the 2024 postseason? It's a good question. Well, we'll find out soon enough. We'll talk a little bit about them. Also, let you listen to some South Carolina football from yesterday. You're listening to the early game. It is springtacular. What is that, you ask? Well, that's what happens when the deals are in full bloom over at Love Chevrolet, and that is what is going on right now. You can rev up your season with Love Chevrolet's exclusive specials on Suburbans, Tahoes, Silverados, Trailblazers. You can go find the whole 14 acres of Love Chevrolet vehicles on display and ready to be sold right now. Get out to Love Chevrolet, I-26 and Harbison between Lowe's and Frankie's Fun Park. Other dealers might upsell you, overcharge. They'll say anything to get the sale, but at Love Chevrolet, they've been in business for over 60 years because they treat you the right way. Honesty, integrity, doing it with first-class professionalism. Go visit Love Chevrolet this weekend and find out what I'm talking about because then it is the spring-tacular sale going on. I-26 and Harbison between Lowe's and Frankie's Fun Park. Get out to Love Chevrolet and together, let's drive.
I-77 northbound before Percival Road. That would be exit 15. There is a tie-up there and still slowing things down a fair amount. I-26 eastbound at exit 97. Still the two right lanes are blocked. Our forecast, it looks great for the weekend. Definitely looking forward to being able to be outside a little bit. 74 will be our high today, 79 tomorrow. Uh, Sunday and Monday looking like highs of around 83 and might continue that trend into Tuesday before it gets a little bit cooler on Wednesday with some morning rain. But right now it's not too bad. It's 42 on the early game. <laughs> message board mayhem at its absolute finest because anything you post on message boards could be slanderous as apparently one gamecock fan may be about to learn according oh, no. to georgia that's right this one's a this one's a gamecock bulldog issue and this one of course should be should be held be held accountable. Some of you Gamecock fans who posted that Kirby Smart is a cheater, and according to message board geniuses, Georgia fans would like to sue a South Carolina message board poster for calling Kirby Smart a cheater. That's right. We'd like to sue them. We're way too litigious in this society, but that's a whole other topic. I'm for USC on the BigSpur.com. Thank you, J.C. Sherbert and John Whittle for all you do for us. I'm for USC. So it's been well known for well. It's been a well known fact for years. Coaches such as Kirby Smart and notorious cheaters let their players run wild. But I'm all that's not that surprised. Did you not stay on the topic being discussed? And it goes on to some other stuff. But talking about Kirby Smart letting his players run wild, being a cheater. Tally, seventy eight on Dogs two four seven wants to know. A member of the USC Juniors two four seven site posted slanderous comments about Kirby and Dabo. Are these remarks allowed? He says, I know I enjoy picking on USC, but I refrain from personal attacks and then wants to know how we can sue these two message board posters. Oh, boy. Be careful what you post on the message board, kids. Uh, people could v- get very upset. Also, last night, Clemson, you put Arizona in a bad place. Wildcat Authority on the 247 Sports Network. Very upset. One poster said, I've said it all season. Get rid of Tommy Lloyd. Very upset with Tommy Lloyd last night after losing to the Tigers. Another poster said, he's not ready for his prom. Period. Get him out of here. Third poster gives the asterisk symbols, the four asterisk symbols, which usually means you want to use a bad word. And Yes. And so it's basically a bleak, bleep Tommy Lloyd situation. And then another poster weighs in, at least Sean Miller made Elite Eights. Tommy is a paper tiger when it matters. Wow. That's getting a little uh, little spicy. Uh, There was more. This is more from last night from Wildcat Authority. Reno Cat says, never switch defense. It just sits there like an idiot. I'm done. There will be no donations. He's proven he can't motivate. Again, Clemson fans, this is all because of you and your team. Another poster says, we're kind of looking really, really dumb for getting rid of Sean Miller. He may have been stubborn, but he wasn't going to get outcoached and allow the bleep we saw offensively tonight. Performance? Was that the word? He he meant to say performance. No, he the bleeping. I I think he bleeped. Yeah. I was just trying there's to, only you know, four. I'm, I'm only, oh, assuming, I'm only, four. I'm only okay. assuming because there was four asterisks and performance is a lot more words than that. I would have thought there would have been about seven of those asterisks if if it was an obscene word. I don't know. It's could okay. Been. Could have been. And then I'll leave you with this one for message board mayhem. This is from Ma 
9573 on Wildcat Authority. Again, thank you, Clemson fans, for what you've done to Arizona fans after last night. Ma9573 says, I'm done caring so much about this cursed program. I'm done feeling like I care more than the team. I'm done feeling like I care more than the former players. I'm done with stupid players. I'm done with coaches unable to win the big games. I'm done. 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 I'll see you next season. Clemson fans, Clemson's basketball program, you have sent Arizona Nation spiraling wow. after last night. The Wildcats. There's a lot more, by the way, if you go to Message Board Geniuses. Uh, another one, Salem Shooter says, Clemson is not a good basketball team. That's why this hurts, because we aren't either. <laughs> mm, my. They're not handling it well not at all. in Tucson. I mean, I realize, yeah, several years they do tend to go a little bit further in the tournament, but okay. Uh, and I'll leave you one, another one from Reno Cat. Biggest choker in the history of March Madness. They are not happy in Reno. Clemson fans, you can walk around smiling this morning, feeling good about yourself. Again, you have sent Arizona Wildcat fans message board posters into an absolute spiral. They are in an absolute tizzy after last night's 77 72 victory over the Wildcats. 803 404 6100. That was message board mayhem. Mostly thank you to the Arizona Wildcat message board posters for uh, for losing their mind after losing to Clemson last night. Yesterday, South Carolina's football coaches spoke. Mike Furry, new wide receivers coach, wide uh, defensive backs coach Torian Gray also speaking. Uh, one of the things that Mike Furry talked about was developing freshman wide receivers. These freshman wide receivers. This was something Shane Beamer talked a little bit about kind of I don't want to say even hinted at he kind of got straight to the point that he needed to see more development in young wide receivers this is Mike Furry yesterday talking about his freshman wide receivers I think those two guys uh if you'd if 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 you'd asked me day one you know I probably would have been able to tell you that uh the way they look and the, the way they were looking and every just kind of feeling everything out you knew it was day one uh after the last Two practices, practices four and five. Uh, those guys have really sunk in, and uh, I, I would not say I would not say they're freshmen anymore. I mean, those guys. I'm impressed with their uh, their turnaround for their youth, but yet both of those guys have a very very high meter of competitiveness. Uh, they have a very big, the high character or high uh, care factor, and it has allowed those guys to jump in fast and uh, kind of start taking a little bit of some ownership that you belong here at number one, and, uh, and now, now you got to continue to grow, and they both have shown that over the last couple of days. I, I've, been, I've been highly pleased with both of those guys. It's going to be a good barometer for him. DeBron Gatling, Mazio Bennett, the two freshmen that he is uh, referring to. Bennett, obviously, a guy that uh, Justin Stepp was able to wrestle back away from Tennessee uh, in-state guy from Greenville was injured last year suffered kind of a serious injury uh, but is fully healthy now and going through uh, spring practice to Bron Gatling a guy that South kind of flipped from Texas A&M after he decommitted following uh, Jimbo Fisher's firing there Gatling uh, kind of underrated out of out of uh, Georgia I think underrated he, he seemed to earn some really positive reviews at the uh, the Under Armour All-American game uh, Under Armour All-Star game and and was a guy that again was only about a three-star uh, but it, it, those two guys are, are players that are expected to come in and make an impact now on the flip side of things you've got Tori and Gray and coming up in the next segment I'll let you listen to a little bit of what Tori and Gray had to say because just as Mike Furry's working with his freshman wide receivers Tori and Gray is working with his freshman defensive backs we'll let you listen to that when we return it's the early game
And it's not been too bad out on the highways, but we do have a couple accidents still to remind you of. I-77 northbound before Percival Road and still a big tie up I-26 eastbound at exit 97. Still a report that the right lanes are blocked. So stay left and uh, have a little patience, please. 74 sunny skies is what we're going to be looking at for today. 79 tomorrow, 83 for your Easter Sunday. And we kind of stay in the low 80s through about Tuesday before a little bit of a colder front comes in and maybe a little bit of rain. But right now, it's not too bad. Just need a jacket to get you started. 43 on the early game. Again, reminder tonight, 6.45 pregame, 7 o'clock first pitch. South Carolina baseball will be right here on 107.5 the game. So you can hear baseball tonight, 6.45 pregame, 7 o'clock first pitch. It'll be right here on 107.5 the game. And tomorrow, 1.45 pregame, 2 o'clock first pitch. Uh, right here, 107.5 the game. So Gamecock baseball on 107.5 the game this weekend. Just a reminder, today at 4.30, the women's basketball team uh, will have their pregame, but that will be on 98.5 WOMG. Tip-off set for 5 o'clock, 4.30 pregame. So, again, just for your schedules, 98.5 WOMG for women's basketball at 4.30 today. Baseball tonight, 6.45 pregame, 7 o'clock first pitch right here, 107.5 the game. And speaking of that, let's give you a chance to win some tickets. 803 404 6100 is how you can call in right now. We'll take calls four and five. These are tickets for next Friday, a week from today. Next Friday, South Carolina baseball versus Texas A&M. Game one at Founders Park. We'll give away two pairs of tickets. Game, uh, uh, callers four and five, 803-404-6100. We'll give away tickets right now. Callers four and five next Friday. South Carolina baseball, seven o'clock. Founders Park taking on Texas A&M. I uh, mentioned it, football coaches talking yesterday. We just listened to Mike Furry talk about his freshman wide receivers. Now, the freshman defensive backs are in, and Torian Gray has got to talk a little bit about those. Here's what he had to say yesterday regarding his freshman defensive backs. Normal, normal progressions of a freshman, for the most part, you know, they come in, you're trying to learn these coverages. You're just trying to get in a stance. You're trying to learn where do I put my eyes and my keys. Um, and those things like that, man, how to finish a play, how to tackle. So I've been impressed that there, there is growth. There is growth. Um, a lot of times there's not a amount of growth you can see through five practices, but I can see growth through five practices with those guys, so that's encouraging. <clears throat> you know, I think for, for that, and, and let's get – I tell you what, let me do this. Let's play one more because you got the freshman defensive backs, but you have the guys who played last year in Vakari Swain and Judge Collier. And Judge Collier played a lot of snaps last year. Uh, let's play this real quick, Jen, and then we'll get to uh, go back to this defense, the freshman defensive backs because South Carolina obviously is becoming experienced in that backfield. But here is what Torian Gray had to say yesterday about Vakari Swain and Judge Collier. Well, the corner spot, any spot back on the defensive back end, it, there's a there's an urgency and there's a strain. Um, we call it accountability and details. You know, kind of, kind of on our mantras, all those acronyms, USDA. And when you get talented guys out of high school, sometimes they don't understand the urgency of the position and why you have to strain and why you have to be detailed. Uh, for the position so just seeing them mature and, and okay I'm gonna try to finish this technique and finish this play with a with a certain strain a certain effort and that's been a lot more consistent so you know part of it's just growing up and part of it's just keep hearing it and keep seeing it so that's been what I'm 
encouraged about is their their growth from a maturity standpoint and understanding those those things we talk about. So the thing here, South Carolina, there's no doubt South Carolina secondary has to play better this year. And you look at the main three, Nick Eman, Worry, Jalen Kilgore, and uh, DQ Smith, basically your safeties. They have to play better. Just starts. It starts with those three. And then it works its way down to right now what you know to be what we assume to be, I guess, your other cornerback starter, and that's O'Donnell Fortune. He was going into his redshirt senior year. Those rumors about him maybe transferring out. Well, he stuck around. He said, I thought, I thought last year would be the year that O.D. Fortune took a step forward and really kind of announced himself as that next defensive back in in what is a lineage what is a great legacy of South Carolina defensive backs and he didn't really do that he was a little bit too hit and miss uh, Marcellus Dial now is obviously looking to be drafted this year I thought OD Fortune with his length with his ability would be one of those guys who would step forward and he didn't but those are your four that you're looking to plug in at some place somewhere so that leaves the fifth spot open and that's why I played the freshman defensive backs part Kelvin Hunter's considered a little bit more of a safety as opposed to a defensive back. You've got David Boos, uh, 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 Bus- uh, Busey, David Busey, who comes in as a freshman and as a defensive back, and he's, again, considered more of a safety hybrid type guy. And then that's followed up uh, by those guys that I just mentioned. Vakari Swain uh, is a guy that has been talked about a lot. Judge Collier contributed a good bit last year, and – I really think is in the is the guy in position to take control of that starter spot. So we'll continue to watch that monitor throughout spring. We'll wrap up the program next, Jen. We'll wrap everything up. Terry Foyd, Terry Ford has never done radio with me. He gets the Bill Gunner experience. Uh, lucky me. I've been avoiding this for three years. You I couldn't are, avoid it. Today. Three years, yeah, yeah. It was time. It was finally time. We'll catch up. <laughs> we'll talk some. We'll talk some sports. I kind of want to know Baltimore Orioles. Are they the real deal? It's Orioles talk here. Oh, that to wrap up <laughs> should be March. fantastic in you, Columbia, South Carolina. Bill Gunner, Terry Ford, Jen Jensen. It's the early game. Are tax troubles weighing you down? 
Uh, it is tax season. You don't want that to happen. Don't let the stress of taxes, levies, liens hold you back any longer. I've got just the company for you. The Ecton Law Firm. They understand how to deal with this. That's their business. They know what they're doing. Contact the Ecton Law Firm today for a free consultation and get the worry of taxes off your chest. 803-771-9800. That's how you can get a free consultation. And again, the Ecton Law Firm, they understand the challenge you're facing. That's why John Ecton and his team are ready to offer you peace of mind that you deserve, especially this time of year. Tax season, it can be stressful. I've been there before. Don't let it be stressful for you. Contact the Ecton Law Firm, 803-771-9800. Get that free consultation. For more information, visit them on the web, ectonlawfirm.com. That's E-C-T-O-N lawfirm.com. Call them today. Tell them Bill Gunner sent you. If you think you've got problems right now, wait until your roof starts leaking. That's a real issue. And if you've been around Columbia, if you've been around Lake Murray like myself, you've been in Myrtle Beach where those storms roll off the ocean, boy, I tell you what, rain can really affect your roof. And with Mid-State Roofing, they know how to handle it. They'll make sure that you are taken care of. They'll make sure that they put you in a maintenance contract. They have a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week call center. Someone is ready to handle your phone call. That's why they've been the leader in the roof and waterproofing industry for nearly 30 years because of the way they service not just columbia but florence myrtle beach or wherever you may be listening on the 107.5 the game app this morning mid-state roofing is ready to help you give them a phone call 803-356-1919 again that's 803-356-1919 trust me when i say it you need some leak detection so if you've got a leak let mid-state roofing take a peek Eight forty six as we roll along and we get you ready. Remember, a week from today, we will be out at Charwood Golf Club for the spring golf tournament. Preston Thorne will hit the uh, the opening tee shot, and he's not here to tell you about it, but I can tell you, Preston <laughs> promises it is Preston's guarantee when he hits the opening tee shot that you will not do worse for him <laughs> than him. He has set it up, Terry, to where he says he's going to hit the worst shot. That way, when you see him hit his opening uh -huh. tee shot. You're like, wow, I cannot be worse than a college football player. A former guy cannot be worse than that. <laughs> Let me go have my day. Can you top his his opening tee shot and do worse than him? So here, I'll get my question. Is he like our Jack Nicholas at the Masters? Yes. When, is that honorary is? honorary uh, opener? So that's who Preston will be from now on, the honorary opener. And by the way, yeah. No if you're if you're gonna play in this thing, after Preston hits his tee shot, you're gonna feel a lot better about you. So come out. It's it is a good time. We are there to talk <laughs> yes. sports. Next Friday, of course, will be the opening of the Women's Final Four. We expect South Carolina to be there. $400 a foursome, 10 a.m. shotgun start, onion sausage. You've had onion sausage before. No, I've had sausage. I've never had onion you sausage. Did, you didn't have any last year? We don't nope. know if we had any last year. No, you ate it all. I Where did. Got well, it. that's the six. That's the. <laughs> that's why you get there at six. <laughs> people know it is a staple of South Carolina golf tournaments. Rock Lucas will do a great job cooking it up. Onion sausage for breakfast, sponsored by Old Timey Meat Market. We'll have sandwiches for lunch, sponsored by Firehouse Subs. Go ahead, call today eight zero three. 755-2000. It's 803-755-2000. Get registered. 10 a.m. shotgun start. $400 is how much it costs for a team. Trust me, you're going to want to be out there. We have about 20 teams now, so it's going to be a great field. we got just a few more spots left. You need to call Charwood today. Get in touch with Amanda or Brooke out there today. Call Charwood, 803-755-2000 is how you can call and get registered. Come on out. Get out there early. We'll be broadcasting myself, Preston, Jen. We're going to have a great time. Onion sausage again. Mimosa bar cannot go wrong. Absolutely cannot go wrong. And Dude. Terry Ford has promised 
or he will sit shirtless on one hole. <laughs> That's right. That he will be a beautiful day. It's going to be a beautiful day. Uh, sit there and uh, sit there in my mankini and uh, do my uh, do the lot do the noon to three show. We want people to attend this. Guys. It's a golf course. They can throw <laughs> golf balls at him. <laughs> they can throw pine cones at him. It's a good time. But okay, every now and then, after somebody's had a few too many mimosas, some tee shots almost hit us. <laughs> Surprisingly, see? yes, it's see, stunning. so it's a it's the, more of a risk. The, the best moment, Jen, of of my because this is I'll forget we do two a year, my sixth, eighth, tenth, whatever golf tournament, is I'm sitting there at Charwood. This guy pulls up in his cart, never met him before in my life, and he's like, he says, "I just want you to know that little that 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 who's that little short chunky guy you got on the morning show." Bob, Bo, Bill, uh, that guy's, uh, he's drunk, he's a wreck, he's all over the place, and the guy's just dog and, dog and gunner, and I'm laughing, and then I find out, you know who it was? Bill's dad. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> it was so yeah, perfect. Well, yeah. and, and t- I was going to say, and Tyler just came in here and told me, if you're doing any kind of a mankini thing, you're doing the show alone. Yeah, another <laughs> so, good. So, just a heads up. <laughs> another good another good point. I'm not allowed. There's a law that was not allowing me to go near a mankini. Yeah, good. Nobody so, needs to see that. Yeah, good call. I shower with clothes on. Government government doesn't always do the right thing. They did the right thing there, <laughs> uh, I will say. 803-404-6100. Baseball season. Are you, I, I mean, again, Baltimore, that's where you're from. Mm-hmm. The Orioles. I grew up with the Orioles. I mean, Cal Ripken Jr. Mm-hmm. I even had a Brooks Robinson card back wow. in the day. Yeah. I knew you were that old. Baseball. Baseball card collector, man. And Orioles, all of a sudden, they stunk. Ugh. One of the worst organizations in all of sports. They were mm-hmm. ridiculous. Now, it's the Dodgers, it's the Braves, and a lot of projections I've seen have the Orioles. You had to go up there. You're doing some family-related things recently. Is there, is the, or are the Orioles? I can get on board with an Orioles-Braves World Series. Dude, there, there's a buzz again. Like, when I was a kid, the Orioles were good every year. Like, if they only won their division, it was like, that's it? It's sort of like South Carolina basketball. And it was like, the Orioles were always good. Then they won the World Series when I was young. Then they've stunk for the most part. They've been bad for most of my life now. So there's a buzz in town again that it hasn't been since probably 96, 97 when they uh, went to the American League Championship Series back-to-back. People are actually wearing Oriole jerseys. Now, you know how this goes. Yeah. When your team's really good, everybody's got gear. When you're bad, all the gear's in the closet. Nobody's wearing gear when you're losing 110 games. Unfortunately, around here, we've worn the gear. The, the gear has <laughs> continuously been worn. It's, it's what I'd love to, now that I say that out loud, uh, a Braves-Orioles World Series. If you don't, haven't paid attention, the Orioles are loaded with young talent. Yep. Absolutely loaded. I've done better this year. I've, I've, we're getting to it. I've got Braves tickets. I'll be there next, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday, and I'm excited about that. Well, you're forced. You're doing a sponsored Braves segment. We're, you gotta, you got to start boning up on your baseball. We're runner. all into it. I have, and the Orioles and the Braves get going today. Spencer Strider's on the mound, 3.05 p.m. against the Phillies up there in Philadelphia. Uh, the Phillies fans will throw the batteries at the Braves. I mean, no, get, car they, batteries. By the, they don't throw bad. They throw car batteries in philly three by three if you're gonna have to keep an eye on jay phillips as the Braves start the season i hope you've got turn the tvs off in the studio make sure he's paying attention but i'm kind of excited about major league baseball but in all seriousness for just a second because you've done national radio what is the deal with major i sound like jerry seinfeld but what is the deal with major league baseball not knowing how to promote their product it's opening day, man. It mm-hmm. honestly is one of the great days in mm-hmm. our sports calendar year. Opening day of Major League Baseball. There's a, there's an argument to be made. It should be a national holiday. Because it's yeah. supposed to be the national pastime. And there's only one game on ESPN last night. How do they blow? How does Major League Baseball step on their, their big toe and stub it in a manner where we can't enjoy an opening day? Major League Baseball's done it forever. Major League Baseball believes, Bill, that it's still 1956. Kids are playing stickball in the streets, and it is America's pastime. And it's not America's pastime. And they don't get it. They don't market their players. They don't market their superstars. Like you said, it should have been wall-to-wall baseball. Yeah. Wall-to-wall baseball from noon until midnight. All you had on ESPN's family of networks should have been baseball games. And they give you one game. It's mind-numbing to me that they don't take advantage of that day. Look, I get it. If your metrics and your research says that baseball doesn't bring you ratings like other sports, cool. I get you. But on opening day, what else did you have yesterday? It was actually a packed sports day. Uh, but I went to go get lunch somewhere at noon. And Besides the Sweet 16, what did you have yesterday? 
Well, uh, you had a great you had a great evening of food. Sweet Sixteen, mm -hmm. and you you also had uh, South Carolina. For us, if right. you're a Clemson fan, you had Clemson baseball. You had, but I see. But to your point, to nationally, like, I mean, like, internationally, like, and this is even crazier because I went to get lunch somewhere, and I I told them to at least. They have, a, I think it's Spectrum or whatever, whatever that has the MLB network. And I said, flip it over. There's got to be a noon game on. Let's watch mm -hmm. some baseball. Baseball right. didn't even start till 3 o'clock yesterday. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, I, I swore the, the, they're used to. There was years ago where ESPN had four games, one, four, mm -hmm. seven, and a 10. Right. I, I don't, and I think this is why, and you and I have talked about it. You've got a son. I've got a younger son. And, and why you see baseball continuing to lose the younger audience yep. because – there should have been. You're right. Wall to wall baseball is a great and way here's to describe the thing, it. Ready? ESPN doesn't have the NCAA tournament, the men's tournament. So yesterday, you should have had baseball on all day. Yeah. And counter program against the NCAA tournament. I know it's going to get more ratings than baseball, but the people that don't dig basketball, you're going to give them an alternative to a watch, which is going to be baseball games on the worldwide leader. It makes no sense to me, but this is what baseball does. I mean, they just remember they've had. They didn't market Mike Trout at all. Mike Trout, iconic historic baseball player. They didn't. They didn't oh, market he, Mike if, Trout. If three people walked in here and Mike Trout was one of them, I've had. A, I'd have a thirty-three percent <laughs> chance of, of guessing Absolutely. which one is Mike Trout. That's my point. They they don't they don't market anyone. You've got a a diverse demographic in this country now. You're not promoting Ronald Acuna Jr. You're not uh, Shohei Otani promotes himself. Right. That's separate. You have so many players from diverse backgrounds you could market in baseball, and who do they market? Superstar wise. Yeah, nobody. I mean, even Ronald Acuna Jr. is is not marketed all that well. It's oh, we solved baseball's problem. You feel good? You, you you know what? That was a great segment. <laughs> we figured it that out. That was man. we figured it out in one segment. We may have to do that a few more times. <laughs> That's how it all gets started. <laughs> I appreciate out, you stopping you by. Yeah. You're out today at uh, you're out today at Quaker Steak and Lube, right? Yep, noon to three. Go see him. Bill Gunner for First Palmetto Bank and the mortgage guru, Jacob Crowder. I'm telling you what, it's that time of year where you start looking around thinking maybe you want to refinance. Maybe you're looking at some great property and you want to build on it. Well, guess what? Jacob Crowder and First Palmetto Bank, they have a no-nonsense construction loan available to you. So go ahead. Call Jacob Crowder today, 803-719-1005. That's 803-719-1005. Call Jacob Crowder today and find out what rates are possible for you. He's the mortgage guru for a reason, and you want to make sure you get in touch with him and First Palmetto Bank. They're locally owned and operated, so they have quick and precise underwriting. You can get your answers that you need right away. Call the mortgage guru, 803-719-1005. He's right here, local in town, and First Palmetto Bank is ready to help you. Again, it's 803-719-1005.